Shalom, brothers. Shalom, sisters. Most high Christ bless you all. Shalom. Salute down. All right, Israel, let's stand and face Jerusalem. Yeah, who's going to call the trumpet? Men of Israel, blow trumpets! Trumpets down. <laughs> Holy Father, we give you praise and honor, Lord, and your hope, Sabbath. We come before thee, Lord, not because we watch us above all, but because of your throne of grace, we stand strong. Our Father, we in heaven, honor be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us his day our daily bread. And forgive us for our sin. Forgive other sins against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from all evil. Father, we can be for thee. We pray, Lord, you heal those that are sick among us quickly and speedily, Lord. Be a shield to us, Lord, in this latter day where we're dealing with evil spirit in higher places. Father, we de uh, our trust is in you. Our deliverance is in you. Our salvation is in you. Help us. To overcome this evil time. In the name of your son Jesus the Christ. We pray for our leadership. We pray for our brothers and sisters. We pray that Lord you strengthen our faith. We move fear from us. In Christ. Let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 We also thank you for the food. Also for the drink. In Christ we pray. We ask. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hand salute. Most high salute down, face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Most Yes, a hey, shalom, 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 family, shalom. Uh, you know, I see many, many of my sisters, many of my brothers. Hey, don't let this, don't let this evil time weak your faith. Stay more stronger than ever, because in these latter days we're gonna face these times. So when we do face these times, remember scriptures. What scriptures said? I mean, keep uh, keep their faith. Do not lean on your own understanding. You understand? Because what you see, sometimes it's not what it is. That's how God deal with things. We're going to have to look within deep with these things. Amen. Because uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the prophet Elijah as he had these little servants with him. Uh, then he have to ask the Lord to open the servant eyes so he may see the army that was standing with him. So we in this light of Days and this a lot of time is not about what you see. It's how God do things. 
put your trust in God for all things. Because a lot of time we lean up on ourselves, then we start to say things stupid uh, or, or deal with things not the way it is. So when you're dealing with times like that, like I said, I'm saying it for reasons. Stay on the faith. Stay up on this faith. Yeah, let me get this scripture. Uh, 11. You, you got it? 11. Verse. Let me have a, uh, Hebrew 11. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 11 verse. I think 3 or 4. One of them. Hebrews 11 verse faith. 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Because everything happened because the Lord allowed these things to happen for me. Oh, yeah, I, I use it. I use it. I'm short. I use it. <laughs> it's better. It's better if you get that. Yeah, go ahead. So that things that which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You see, the things you've seen sometimes. You don't know what, what's behind the things that you see. You know what I mean? It's a power behind everything your eyes see. So don't, don't focus on what you see. Then when the Lord trying to do something greater than what you're not seeing. You understand? So focus. Let's focus at this time. Go ahead, Bishop. You good? Oh, praise. How are you brothers doing this Sabbath day? Good. Sisters, how are y'all doing? I'm glad everybody's here. I see y'all were supposed to have a 30-minute break, but we will... Chalk it up to uh, Deacon Malachi's, uh, 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 I don't even know what to call it, lack of uh, something. There's a word, but I can't say it on the air. Uh, oh, you know what? Captain Shemai is here. Remember, you didn't, did you tell everybody what happened in uh, Nigeria when we were there before we caught the corona? Did you tell them what happened? <laughs> you know, he and I came back coughing like hell. Did you tell them what happened? Well, Nigeria has a strange spirit out there, and this one guy walked up. He said, you guys, you guys are so big. So I knew he wasn't talking about me or Aitan. We kind of narrow there. But he looked at Captain Shemaya and was like, you know, your, your body. And it was really strange, the conversation. And asked Captain Shemaya, he said, I watch all you guys' videos. He said, could you take your shirt off for me? Now, we were like, what the hell? Then he said... I watch all your videos. He said, cut the ceiling fan on. Make your shoulders drop. Oh, we said, what the hell is this? <laughs> said, nigga, you better get the hell up out of here. <laughs> Got on LGBT out there. Lusting after brothers. Thick gravy. Thick gravy. <laughs> what the hell? Got the devil out there. I don't know what's wrong with these people. We're going to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to continue with our, our study on um, the uh, churches of uh, the book of Revelation. We're on chapter 2. Like I always say, I know some of y'all are new. Some of y'all are new, and I know some of y'all are slow. Um, if you get it, you get it. You don't, you just rehearse the class next year, and then you catch up with us. Um, we're going to open a revelation like what Deacon Lava had made a comment on, don't go by what your eyes see. When these uh, last and trying days, what we're, ha what we're seeing now, this is an experiment. Esau's doing an experiment on us to see exactly, yeah, I thought you was a BS, but he's right. Social experiment to see how society reacts to an alleged um, uh, pandemic. Esau's buying up all manner of guns. My cousin called me yesterday, said I ain't got no more, because she's just gun collector. She's going to tell me she ain't got no more bullets, and the stores ran out. She's mad as hell, asking where could she get some bullets. I said, pray to the Lord, find some bullets. <laughs> but um, this is just the beginning, and it's, there are more things that's going to come out of this. And it may slow down. Like it says in Thessalonians, it's funny, that just popped in my mind. Uh like a woman in travail. Where's that? Second Thessalonians? The one that says, uh, is it chapter 5? Mm, first Thessalonians? Yeah. Find me that. It just popped in my mind. Mm, five and three. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. And verse 3. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, 
and they shall not escape. So America signed a peace agreement with um, Iran. Don't believe it. They signed an agreement. Um, everybody thought China was going to be the next world superpower. America said, no, I don't think so. Shazam. Look what happened. And the most high tells you after, after Esau is Israel. That's going to be our time to rule. Everybody got to say it. That's right. Y'all better believe that thing. Ain't going to be no damn China. All right? Moab. Okay? For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. Then notice this part. As, a, as travail upon a woman with child. That means the problems of society, the problems of the world, global problems will be like a woman in travail. She'll have a contraction here. A contraction there. The contractions represent world problems. Contraction here, contraction there, and the contractions are drawing closer and closer together. One is spaced five minutes apart, then it's four minutes apart, then three minutes, two, one, and that's it. Then the baby comes. That's when the Lord going to make his entrance into the earth. That's why in verse um, two, it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So that's what I, I want us to be cognizant of in these last and trying times, that it's going to be like that. It's going to be trouble times, then it's going to slow down, and you're going to think everything's all right. Then pow, something else going to happen. So don't sleep on these times. Don't sleep on what's transpiring right now. So let's open up a Revelation, the second chapter. Revelation, the second chapter. But before we do, uh, Officer Elisha, you there somewhere? Can you open up, can you open, get me the article on the ancient Jewish diaspora? Can you get me that for me, that article? Before we read about the seven churches, I want to preface it by giving a little history on the seven churches. You got it, Officer Elisha? Okay. All right. Thank you. Can you, uh, yeah, ancient. Now, that, y'all see that word? They always throw that, that, that uh, suffix, I-S-H, on when it says Jew. They always throw I-S-H in there. That's to make you think it's talking about white folks. Because ish is a suffix that means somewhat like. Not the original, but something like. Like when I say meet me around five-ish. It could be a little before five, a little after five, but not five o'clock. So when they say they are Jewish, they're saying there's something like, in other words, they're telling us in that one word, they are converts. Everybody understand that word? They're saying they are converts. They are not the originals. All right. So scroll down. Let's go down to the part that says Asia Minor. And of course. Okay, Asia Minor and other northern settlements. The northern di diaspora... The word diaspora, by the way, means scattered. Yeah, okay? Indeed. You got it? Go ahead. The northern diaspora arose when the Seleucids took control of Judea after 200 CE. You read about the Seleucids during the time of the Maccabees. Antiochus Epiphanes came out of Seleucus. Go ahead. Around 210 to 205. The Seleucid king Antiochus III moved several thousand Jewish soldiers. Now, that's what I was talking about, King Antiochus Epiphanes. That's the third. Moved what? Moved several thousand Jewish soldiers and their families from Babylonia to Asia Minor. Now, that's what I want you all to see. During the time of King Antiochus, several thousand Jewish soldiers and their families from Babylonia moved uh, families from Babylonia to Asia Minor. When you're reading about the seven churches of Asia Minor, these are Jews. These are not other races. These are our people that were scattered throughout Asia Minor, put there by King Antiochus or Antiochus, some people pronounce it, the third. Give me that precept, find me that in Maccabees where it says, uh, if there's any in, in my empire, uh, free them. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know, but just find me one. Read on. Within two centuries, large Jewish communities were to be found in Antioch and Damascus, in the Phoenician ports, and in the Asia Minor cities of Sardis, Halicarnassus, Pergamum, 
and Ephesus. Now, throughout Asia Minor, the, some of the churches we're going to read about, you got Sardis, you got Pergamos, which is Pergamomna, and Ephesus. These are Jews. These are all Jews that was moved to these areas during the time of the Seleucid dynasty or the time of the Maccabean dynasty. Bear with me. Laba, talk. I'm going to find it. What did it say? Yep. Yes, that's what I want. Get uh, Maccabees 1031. 33. What is the first or second? First? Yes, thank you. First Maccabees 10 and 33. Right. Write this down. Moreover, I freely set at liberty every one of the Jews that were carried captives out of the land of Judea into any part of my kingdom. His part, of, part of his kingdom was Asia Minor. Was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. And I will that all my officers remit the tributes even of their cattle. Right. So I wanted to preface when you... So by reading this, when you get to the book of Revelation about the seven churches, even when you get to the New Testament in general, you know our people were scattered throughout the area of the Greek Empire. These are Jews. And this is why Esau, cleverly, craftily... He said, remove the book of Maccabees under, in the books of the Apocrypha, so that way when they read the New Testament, they're all confused. And I can say that that's anybody that believes in Jesus. Nope, it's not anybody. These are Jews. Everybody understand that? All right, all right, all right. So we're in Revelation chapter 2. Oh, from there, uh, Alicia, pull up the map of the seven churches, please. The map of the seven churches. Oh. You got it? Yeah, you're right. Antioch the fourth is the epiphany. You're right. So is the father. Correct? So, but thank you. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, so you got seven churches of, of Asia. Now what we're going to look at here on the right side, can you zoom in on, a, on my left side, I'm sorry, on the left side? The green, yeah, that whole green section right there. Can you zoom in or no? Now let's move over. Come on. And you can make it a little smaller. Okay, this is Asia Minor, and you see the island of Patmos. This is where John is. Read that for me in the Revelation 1 where it tells you where he's located at. Keep that right there on the screen. Uh, verse, verse is that again? Yeah, read that verse for me, nine. please. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle... That is called Patmos. Right. So that's small on the bottom left in red. You see Patmos. That's where John the Revelator was exiled to. Now you see the seven churches right there. You got Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Now we just read in the article, it said uh, the uh, Jewish soldiers and their families removed were moved to places such as, it said, Ephesus. Pergamum and Sardis. Okay? Now we read in 1 Maccabees 10.33 where they're saying that the Jews were scattered throughout their empire. That was this area here where the seven churches are. All right? From there, let's go to Revelation chapter 2 now. Verse 1? Yes, verse. We're going to start at verse 1. Read it slow for me. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So now the angel of the church of Ephesus. All right, give me that. And, um, give me that. It's a First Samuel 29 and 9. We always, brothers always get an issue when they read the word angel and think that we're, they're emailing letters to Michael and Gabriel. They're not emailing anything to Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, or Uriel. These are the leaders of the churches. Okay. 
1 Samuel chapter 29 and verse 9. This is an example of how the name, the word angel, which means messenger, is used. Go ahead. And Akish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight as an angel of God. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. So the reason I went there is to show you that they refer to our forefathers as angels of God. So when you're reading in Revelation, it says, unto the angel of this church, unto the angel of that church, so forth and so on. It's talking about the leaders of the church. Everybody understand that? All right, read verse 2 again, please. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. All right, so now the understanding of the seven stars and the seven golden candlesticks go back to chapter 1 and verse 20. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So the seven stars are the leaders of the seven churches. Go ahead. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks, which is the menorah, represents the seven churches. So now the first one, he writes to the angel over the first church in Ephesus. Now, verse 2, please. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. So, in the church of Ephesus, you had men trying to set themselves up as apostles. Okay? These are phonies. These are more than likely, I'm pretty sure these were younger men who came in and desired to sit in a seat of authority. They had no experience, understanding, or knowledge to sit in that seat. Read verse 2 again. Verse 2. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not. And has found them liars. Now this is the same thing that occurred in Corinth. Give me that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. 2 Corinthians. Hey, uh, Alicia, put that map back up. I believe there's one that talks about Corinth. Put that up for me again. Look for the one that shows Corinth, the Corinthians or the city of Corinth. Shrink that. I don't think, it might, is it that one? Do they show Corinth on that map? This might be another map that I sent you. I just want to show you the location of Corinth in this verse, and it's going to play a part later on. All right, you got Corinth. Uh, there may be another one. So this is the city of Corinth, which is in Greece. Show me, there might be another one that shows it as a little island. Let me know if you can find it. I sent it to you. I'm, I'm pretty sure I done did. Hmm. Bear with me a second. You found it? Okay. Right, that's it. Thank you. So zoom in where it says Ephesus. Just zoom in a little bit. I just want to show you at a distance. Okay, move, move it to the right a little bit. Move it over to the right. Move it to, no, 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 my right, I meant. My right. Y'all see Ephesus right there in the center, and look where Corinth is. These are the travels that Paul had made. So Corinth is just across the uh, Aegean Sea. And you see Corinth right there on the left. Do your little circle thing right there so they can see it. Y'all can see it right there, right? Do y'all see it? Hello? All right, all right, good. So go back to 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 13. Let yes, me see sir. that. Wait, Sec wait, wait. Start at verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. But what I do, that I will do. Meaning the job that the Apostle Paul was called to do. He said, but what I do, that I will do, which is go out and teach and establish churches. Go ahead. That I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. That I may, the occasion is making reference to they, everyone, not everyone. Some men wanted the occasion to become apostles. That's what he's making reference to. It says that I may, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. He's going to make it crystal clear as, as we read on. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. So they were trying to establish themselves as somebody in the church. So Paul said they got to follow my example if they want to sit in that seat. That's why it says that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Watch the next verse. going to make it clearer. Go ahead. For such are false apostles. He says these guys, they're false apostles. Go ahead. Deceitful workers. And they are deceitful workers in the church of Corinth. Go ahead. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They were trying to transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. So when Paul would leave, you had certain young men setting themselves up as apostles. Like they walked with Christ, which they didn't. Like they were taught by Christ himself, which they were not. Okay? Like they did the things that Paul was doing, which they did not. But yet they desired the occasion to be in that seat. So that was one of the problems that Paul had with the Corinthians, which is one of the problems that Christ had with Ephesus. Now let's go right on back. Go ahead. Go right back to Revelation 2. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 2, verse wait, 2. Wait, wait, wait. No, let's go back to Corinthians. I want to read down just a few verses more. All right. Verse 4. 2 Corinthians Start at 11. 12. One more again. Verse 12. But what I do, that I will do that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, mm -hmm. that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Mm -hmm. For such are false apostles. For such are false apostles. Go ahead. Deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Read. And no marvel. And I'm not shocked. Go ahead. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And Paul's get that's a metaphor right there. That's a deep mystery. I word it like that. Letting you know that when Satan was in the garden, he did not come as a serpent crawling on the ground to Eve going, Psss, Eve. Psss. No, no, no. He came like an angel of light. That's what Paul is revealing. That's a precept. Write that thing down. Go ahead. Verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. See that? So he's, Paul was told what these dudes were doing in Corinth, trying to set themselves up as the apostles, okay? And, he, and Paul called them the ministers of Satan in the church of Corinth. In the I want you to understand it. It's not talking about a group of people outside the church. They were in the church trying to set themselves up as some great people. Read 15 one more again. Verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the, as the ministers of righteousness, mm -hmm. whose end shall be according to their works. So what were they doing in essence? They were disrespecting Paul. They were disrespecting Peter, James, John, and others. That's what they were doing. Young men. I know it was young men. Read on. Verse 16. I say again, let no man think me a fool. So what's Paul saying? Don't think I'm stupid, all right? I'm, I know what y'all are doing. Don't play me a fool. Go ahead. If otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me. He said, if otherwise, just receive me as a fool just for a moment. Go ahead. That I may boast myself a little. That I'm a, and then as you read down, Paul gives his resume to do what? Why did he give his resume when you read like from verse 23 down? To shut those dudes down, in, those young men down, trying to establish themselves as somebody. He said, I'm going to give you my resume. Just, just hold your horses right there. You want to be the apostles? But let me boast just for a little bit and give you my resume. And nobody could hold a candle to what Paul had done over those many years. There's an old expression. Don't compare your chapter 2 to our chapter 30. I'm on chapter 2. Well, we're on chapter 30. Now shut the hell up. Sit down and just listen. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to Revelation 2. Verse 2 again. Uh, back to Revelation. And verse 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, and verse 3. And has borne, and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. So Christ is bringing up there were good qualities in the church of Ephesus. So despite those dudes that say they were apostles and are not and were found liars, he said to the church of Ephesus that they have borne, meaning carried the truth, they have had patience, and for my name's sake, 
They have labored, meaning worked, and has not fainted, have not given up. Verse 4. Verse 4. Nevertheless. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, read 4, read 4, read 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Christ says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, Ephesus. Go ahead. Because thou hast left thy first love. He says, the problem I got with y'all, besides those liars, those of you that's doing right, I have an issue with you too. You have left your first love. Let's go to 1 John 4. 1 John chapter 4 to get understanding on that. And let's start at verse 9, please. The book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. And we touched on that, why it refers to Christ as his only begotten son, because Christ was the alpha, is the alpha and omega. He was the first of all creation, and he was with the father as things were being done through the father. Read. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. The word appropriation means like mediator. Okay, go ahead. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. If God loved us, we ought also to love one another. So John is explaining that this was, this was a problem that he had amongst our people. Okay, jump over to verse 19, please. I'm going to get to a key points. 19. We love him. Because he first loved us. You see that? We love him because he first loved us. Watch this. Go back to Revelation now so we can make the connection. Revelation 2, and that was verse uh, four. 4. Verse 4. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. So we left our first love, which was Christ. Go back to 1 John 4 and verse 19. First John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. Read. Verse 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Watch. He's going to break it down for us right here. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? You see the hypocrisy? Brothers often say, I love God. But yet they hate the brother made in the image of God. They'll be sitting right beside them. That's total hypocrisy. Let me show you another level of that. So John said, he said, uh, where is it again? It says, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I went over this a few days ago with a couple of the brothers. Watch this. This is what brothers often do. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and read verse 12 and 13. And I'll ask you a question. 1 Corinthians chapter, 12, chapter 1, verse 12. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? Hold on now. Let's get, let's, I want y'all, I'm going to ask y'all a question now. Read it again. Then Verse 12. Question. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Stop. So there was division in the church. I want you men to answer this question I'm about to ask. There was division in the church. You had a group in the church of Corinth that said, I'm of Paul. I follow Paul. Another group said, well, I follow Apollos. Another group said, well, I follow Cephas. That was Peter. And another group said, I follow Christ. Here's my question. Out of those four, those four groups, one followed Paul, one followed Apollos, one followed Cephas, which was Peter, and another followed Christ. Out of those four groups, which group was right? Raise your hand if you got the answer. Raise your hand if you got the answer. Okay. Uh, my fall left, fall left, right next to my leg. Yeah, right there. Malachi, give him the mic. Which group was right? Shalom, shalom. What's your name? Soldier Nathan. Soldier what? Nathan. Nathan. Go ahead. What's the answer? I said Paul group was right. The group that said we follow Paul, he was right. Yes, he was following Christ. Paul okay, said have he, a seat. He didn't get it. 
Uh, wait, let me preface it. Maybe Let me help you out a second. Let me go, jump back in the chapter a little bit. Uh, read verse 10 and, and then read 12. Read 10 first. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Read. Verse 11. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. There's arguments among you because of them divisions. Go ahead. Now this I say. Now he's going to explain the arguments. Go ahead. That every one of you saith, I am of Paul. So some of them said they're of Paul. Go ahead. And I of Apollos. Another group said they're of Apollos. And I of Cephas. And they of Cephas. Another group. And I of Christ. Remember, this is in the same congregation. Some of them followed only Paul. Another group of them only followed Apollos. Another group said they only listened to Peter. Another group said they only listened to Christ. So I'm going to ask the question again. Which of those four groups was right? Okay, right here. Right here. Uh, Jose, I think your name is? Okay, right there. All right, shalom, leadership. Shalom. I would say all of them are right. All of them are right. Yes. Well, okay, I got a problem with that. Verse 10. Verse 10. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, verse 10 again. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you. So the problem is there's divisions. Some only listen to Peter. Some only listen to Paul. Some only listen to uh, Apollos. And some only listen to Christ. So you're saying they were all right. I want you to think. Paul's writing them because of the division. There's a problem. Okay, give the, give the mic to this brother. Right there. Yeah, you, you, stand up. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. I would say none of them are right. Okay, why would you say that? Because there's divisions among all of them, so none of them are on the same accord. Mm, okay, that's one thought. How many of you agree with what his answer is? Okay, how many of you agree that says the group that followed Paul was the right group? Raise your hand. How many of you grew, agree that... Uh, Mm, who else has a different answer? Okay. Come over here. Pick, you pick somebody, Malachi. <laughs> Shalom leadership. So Shalom. Shalom. Can you repeat the question again? Out of those divisions... Some followed only Paul. Some followed only Peter. Some only listened to Apollos. Some only listened to Christ. Which group was correct? I'd say the group that does follow Christ. Okay. Who agrees with that answer? Okay. That's, is that the majority of hands going up? Okay. How many of you said they were... Okay, that's the group that says the group to follow Christ. How many of you said they all were wrong? Raise your hand. Okay, very good. That's the answer. They were all wrong. Every last one of them. Right. Remember, he asked the question. He said, is Christ divided? Now, you might ask yourself, but the group said they follow Christ. Watch. I'm going to show you what was wrong with that. Hold your finger right there. Go back to 1 John chapter 4. That's why I preface it with 1 John 4. Yes, sir. Uh, what verse was that? Uh, 1 John 19, chapter 4. Or oh, 20. Verse and 20. verse 20. Verse John, chapter 4 and verse 20. This is what's wrong with the group that says they only follow Christ. Go ahead. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Here's my question. During the time of the Corinthians, was, was Christ walking the earth? No. No, he was not. They never seen him. They didn't see him. So how now, what do they mean by they only follow Christ? You got to watch spirits that say, I only follow Christ. You know what they're saying? They can do whatever the hell they want. There's nobody that can check them or correct them. They say they use that, they justify, justify them. I don't follow no man. Remember what Acts 8, when the, the eunuch said, uh, Philip asked the guy, do you understand what you're reading? Who remembers what the response was to Philip? He said, how can I understand except some man teach me? 
or guide me. Is that what it said? What did it say? Get that. Acts 8.31. Get that. Get that. I'm going to show you that. Watch out for these brothers. And it's a lot on YouTube. There's a lot on Facebook. I don't follow no man. I follow Christ. Well, can you show me where Christ is? Can you show me the garment he has on, please? I want to see it. Read that. Acts chapter 8. I'll start at verse 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? Notice he said, How can I understand except some man should guide me? Man must guide you. Imagine a dude said, uh, Christ is going to come down and teach me. Really, Christ is going to come down and teach you. Wow, this is an amazing thing. But what, when you hear brothers and sisters say, you ever see it on Facebook? I only follow Christ. Watch, those are evil spirits right there. Because that way, Christ is not on earth. That, and it'll be the same ones that say, women can wear pants. You can eat pork if you want. And you can't correct me because you ain't Christ. Watch those evil, negro, black and brown spirits. Lava, what are you going to say? No, no, what you say is true. You remember what they, uh, you remember what they say. Don't listen to them. I only follow Christ. That mean the men that God set over you to get you in order. Don't listen to them. I only follow Christ. That's a dumb spirit. Exactly. That's the same spirit that went down during the time of Moses. They said, we don't want to hear you, Moses. We want to hear the most high. Right. Same spirit. We don't want to hear Moses. We want to hear the Lord. Then when the Lord spoke, they were scared to death. Mountains started blowing up. Thunder and lightning came down. It could kill them all. Then they said, oh, Moses, we'll listen to you now. So when you hear black people, it's always some black ashy devil today that says, I don't follow no man. I only follow Christ. Watch that brother or sister that says that. Like they woke up and Christ said, let me give you the understanding. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Open your Bible. I'm going to teach you that you're an Israelite. Now go to Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to show you my color. And they're going, yes, your Lord, teach me. Hey, there's a brother in Harlem. Remember that brother in Harlem that said he went to Mount Sinai and the archangel came down and taught him. And you got a whole group of people that believe that thing. And a dude used to read for Yahweh Sop when he was 15 years old. But now he teaches the lie that the angels came down and taught him. You got knuckleheads that believe that. And we got the video proof that he learned under us. So what the hell is this? <laughs> Back to Revelation chapter 1. See, we hear foolish and we stay quiet on a lot of stuff. We could put tape after tape with this brother as a child reading for Deacon Yahweh. We said, no, no, I'm not leaving alone. They, they, they have been appointed to follow that. Where we at? Uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Okay. No, no, no. Go and give me uh, Psalms 2 and 12. About, because I wanted, we went to 1 John because it says we left our first love. The church of Ephesus left their first love, which was Christ. Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 12. Kiss the son. Kiss Christ. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. Kiss the son. Lest he be angry. Lest he be mad as hell at thee. Go ahead. And ye perish from the way. And he kill you. When his wrath is kindled but a little. Read it again. Kiss the son. Meaning what? Remember Christ said in John 14, 50? If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what David is saying in Psalms. Read it again. Kiss the son. If you love me, keep the commandments. Go ahead. Lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. Lest he be angry and he kill you, put you to death. Go ahead. When his wrath is kindled but a little. Okay. Let's Bl go back now. Was that it? I'm sorry. No, sir. Yeah. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Mm -hmm. Let's That's go it. back to Revelation 2 now. And we are at verse 5. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent. And do the first works. Now, that's a heavy statement right there. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. The first works, before I get to the first works, I'm going to start with the beginning part. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. You know what you got to do? If you find yourself stumbling in this truth, the first thing you got to do is 2 Corinthians 15 and 3. Get that? 
Or is it 13 and 13, 5? I'm sorry. 13, and, 13 five. and 5. Yes, sir. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourself. That's the first thing. So when John said, when the angel, when Christ said through to John, he said, uh, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, you got to examine yourself and say, what caused me to stumble in this truth? Where did I make my mistake? This is what the church of Ephesus had to do. Self-examination. Where did we go wrong? Read that again. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. You got to examine yourself. Self-examination. So at the church had to examine, where did we go wrong? Go ahead. Prove your own self. You got to prove your own self. A brother or sister can't prove you. You, your works can only speak for you. We, a brother, we might like you as a brother. We might like you as a sister. But your works speak for you. We will, many a time we'll stand up and say, oh, this is a good brother. And that brother turn around and do something dumb as hell. Like give out uh, answers on a test. And we'll go, we'll be like, no, not that brother. Not that brother. We no, we love that brother. Not him. He would never do that. Then lo and behold, he did it. And it's like, damn. Now we got egg on our face. The hell is this? Read that again. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. You got to prove your own selves. Go ahead. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Except you be reprobate means void of judgment, void of understanding. Give me um, Mark 4.18. Let me give you a personal example of how you could go wrong. Mark 4, verse 18. Christ made mention of four types of Israelites. But there's Mark. one group we want to concentrate on just for a moment, just for a moment. Go Mark, ahead. chapter 4, and verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns. These are the Israelites that are sown among thorns. This is the third type of Israelites. Go ahead. Such as hear the word. You hear the Bible, you hear the scriptures. And the cares of this world. And the cares of this world. Go ahead. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the deceitfulness of riches. This goes for male or female, by the way. The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Go ahead. And the lusts of other things entering in. Notice that part. And the lusts of other things entering in. That lust, the main two types of lust you will often find in any congregation is sex and money. We just saw the one, the lust for money in Austin. That whole thing almost blew up and all was almost destroyed. But the most I allowed them to recover all praises. The ones that could not repent and get themselves right, God moved them out the way. Every last one of them. Some of those spirits was in Texas. God moved them out the way. They couldn't repent. They could not recover. There on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Periscope today, I'm still in the truth. I was, no, 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 you're not. You're still, you're not in the truth. No, you're not. Did you ever repent for your evils? No, so you're not in the truth. You're not in the truth. Read that again. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in. Choke the word. Choke the word. And it becometh unfruitful. And it becometh unfruitful. So in order to understand that, you got to examine you. You got to check. You got to do self-examination on a personal level. So when we get back to the church of Ephesus, Christ was telling them as a body, he was telling the leaders, I want you leaders to self-examine where you made your mistake, where you went wrong, because you left your first love. You, you left Christ. You went to something else. Let's go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 2, verse, verse 5 again. 5 again. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works. And do the first works. Repent. The first, same when we all first came in. Remember when you come in the truth, you got that zeal. You want to hear the scriptures every day, every hour. You didn't read the Bible and fall asleep when you first came in. You was wide awake. But now you notice, you saw reading it. So Christ said, huh, do the first works. Read on. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. And will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Now, nah, that's some heavy stuff. He said, or oh, I will come and remove thy candlestick out of his place. Look at Luke 19 real quick. Luke 19 and 26. 
Your, your candlestick means your life essence, your understanding of scripture. That's what he's talking about, your candlestick. Like, remember in Proverbs 6, 23? That, read that for us quick uh, first. Let's read that about your candlestick. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. And the, and the commandment is a lamp. That lamp is referring to the candlestick, the menorah. That's what's talking about. Read it again. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproof, reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So now when we get to Revelation, Christ is saying to the church of Ephesus, you, bet, you lead us, or I'm going to snuff out your candlestick, meaning it ain't going to be no more Ephesus. Y'all going to be done. I'm tired of you. So Luke 19, 26. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 26. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. So you have some truth, you have understanding, you shall be given more. Go ahead. And from him that hath not, you lost it. Go ahead. Even that he hath shall be taken away from him. The little bit that you got is going to be snuffed out. That's what Christ is saying right there. So let's go back to Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2. And verse 6. Verse 6. But this thou hast. That thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans. The, the Nicolaitans were, was a group of Israelites that worshipped the Greek god Nike. The Greek god Nike, which meant god of victory. They was following this dude, which went into idolatry. So this church in Ephesus has some issues going on with it. Read that again. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Mm -hmm. You hate the deed of the Nicolaitans, go ahead. Which I also hate. Christ says, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Go ahead. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. What verse you at? Verse 7. Uh-huh. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Hold on. Give me uh, Sirach 1919, the tree of life. People always ask, what is this tree of life? Him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. That eat is not a service. The brother did a song talking about Eve ate an apple. Eve ain't no damn apple. You don't read apple in the Bible when they ate it. It ain't talking about that. When it's talking about eating, it's talking about they learned it, took part in it. That's what it's talking about. Read that. Sirach, chapter 19, verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life, meaning the tree of life. Go ahead. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You shall receive the fruit of immortality. You're going to get and be blessed. Immortality. That's the tree of life. Immortality. To rule and live forever. Go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 2, two verse 7. seven. Mm-hmm. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Mm -hmm. Verse and unto, 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, now right? here's another church. Let's put the uh, map back up, uh, Officer Elisha. Let's put the map back up. Remember, these were colonies of Israelites. Okay, not this one. The one that says the seven churches. Shrink it. Okay, the seven churches. We read about Asia. Right above, I mean, read about uh, Ephesus. I'm sorry. Right above Ephesus, you see Smyrna right there in Asia Minor, right there. So this is now the second colony of Jews in Asia Minor. Revelation 2 and verse 8. The book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last. Which was dead and is alive. Yeah, I'm sorry, read it again. Verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna. So now he's writing to another set of leaders that were over the church of Smyrna. Give me that Galatians 4.14. Galatians 4, 14. The book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 14. We're just going there as a precept for angel. Because some of you still, I'm just confused about that word angel. Go ahead. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God. You received me as an angel of God. Let's go back to Revelation 2 and 8, please. 
Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? Oh, you know what I want? Officer Alicia, give me the article on Smyrna. Smyrna. S-M-Y-R-N-A. Smyrna. I sent you a brief little article. It says Smyrna at the top. Is that it? Okay, give me the section that says Roman and Byzantium period. Roman and, it might say Byzantine period. Roman and Byzantine period. Right there, that's it, right there. Can we read that? Somebody over here so who can see it clear. Uh, somebody got a mic over there? Let me see. Uh, I got it, I got it. Uh, what do you, you want to read? Uh, uh, he just, yeah, right here. Roman and Byzantine period. Go ahead. Okay. As one of the principal cities of Roman Asia, Smyrna, Smyrna vied with Ephesus and Pergamum for the title first city of Asia. Meaning they wanted to be the capital. They were going against Ephesus to be the, Smyrna wanted to be the top one, but Ephesus ended up being the capital. Go ahead. A Christian church and a bishopric existed here from a very early time, probably originating in So the you see a, a Christian church and a bishopric. Can we highlight... Uh, highlight that word, Bishop Prick. Let me see what pops up. I didn't look at it. I just want to see what it says. Might be a whole long dissertation. Now, okay, go back. Give me the ver uh, give me um in Acts chapter one about Judas Iscariot. It uses the same word. Yes, sir. You know what I want? I mean, I'm yeah, going I, there with I you. But let me just go to Acts one. We Acts want to look up that word, Bishop Prick. Bishop Rick. <laughs> uh, okay, Acts chapter 1, verse 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. So Judas had already been, he died. He, well, he committed suicide. It said, uh, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Remember, Judas Iscariot was an apostle. Bishopric is another term for office of apostle. Okay, that's what it's making reference to. Let's go back now to the article. Go back to the article. Go ahead. A Christian church and a bishopric existed here from a very early time, probably originating in the considerable Jewish colony. See that? A Jewish colony. These were Jews. These were not other races. I just wanted to uh, reiterate that point right there. Let's go back to the scriptures, please. You can take that off, Officer Alicia. Okay. Revelation, Revelation chapter two. 2, verse 9. 9. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, we often read that verse. Heavy verse, heavy verse, love that verse. So, Christ is saying that he knows the works of the Israelites that were in Smyrna. They did a lot of works. Why? Because they were a colony of Rome. He said, and they caught a lot of tribulation. Okay? And they were deeply impoverished. That's the poverty. Then he says, but thou art rich. Why? Because all the promises in the Bible pertain to the Israelites, which the church of Smyrna was a part of. Then it says, he says, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Now watch this. You will hear or read Christian commentaries. I want you all to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. You will read about Christian commentaries, and they'll say that this verse is referring to the scribes and Pharisees. It is not referring to anything else but them. That's not true. Watch this. Go to the book of John, chapter 8, and verse... Go to John 8. John chapter 8. And we're going to read verse 33. The book of John, chapter 8 and verse 33. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. So these Jews, they said, we be Abraham's seed. Go ahead. And we're never in bondage to any man. We weren't in bondage to any man. Go ahead. How sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. So Christ is talking to the Jews. Okay? Look at verse 31 so we can get to understanding. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews 
which believed on him. Because he was his whole argument or discussion was to the Jews. Some believed, some did not. Read verse 33 again. Verse 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? So this is the group, obviously, that did not believe. Jump down to verse 37. Verse 37. This is what Christ says to them. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word have no place in you. So Christ said, I know you're Abraham's seed. I know you. Yeah, you are Jews. But you seek to kill me. Okay, because my word has no place in you. Jump down to 44. Verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. Now, believe it or not, the devil he's making reference to, he's not just talking about the spiritual demon Satan. Who were the Pharisees following? Who were they afraid of? Rome. 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 You are of your father, Rome. <laughs> And the lust of your father you would do. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. That was Cain. Mm -hmm. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. That's right. That Roman Empire was Cain before the flood. The Roman Empire was Esau after the flood. And the Pharisees obeyed Rome, they have their father. He said, yeah, you are Jews, but you of your father, the devil. So now, let's go back to Revelation 2, 9 again. So then what is he talking about? I'm confused now. I know thy, Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Watch this. Now let's get the deep understanding, the real understanding of that. Let's get to the prophecy first. Give me Daniel eleven fourteen. 14. The book of Daniel, chapter 11 and verse 14. And in those times, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. King of the south was the Ptolemy dynasty. Also, the robbers of thy people. Now this is what I want right here. Also, the robbers of thy people, go ahead, shall exalt themselves, shall exalt themselves as the Jews, go ahead, to establish the vision, to establish the vision that they are the Jews, go ahead, but they shall fall, but they shall fall. So it was prophecy that you would have a group of people who would rob our heritage, okay? Not only rob our heritage, rob our land, our country. Our name, they would rob everything and seek to establish the vision that they are the daughters, I mean, sons and daughters of God. Watch this. Give me Luke 1, 5. The book of Luke, chapter 1. Wait, bef yeah, yeah, read that. Damn. Chapter 1 and verse, damn, hold on. Verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, well, stop. That's all we want. Herod, the king of Judah. Herod, the king of Judah. Can we look up Herod? Who got a Bible dictionary? Just look it up for us. Somebody look up Herod and read it for us. I got it. Herod. Who was Herod, the king of Judah? I'm curious. Come on. Who got it? Officer Yuri got it. Come on. Herod, Idumean rulers of Palestine. Wait, hold on. Where are you reading from? Where are you reading from? This is the Bible Compact, the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Mm -hmm. Page 224. Herod, Idumean rulers of Palestine. Idumean rulers of Palestine. Can we look up Idumean? Because that's another Greek word. Idumean ruler of Palestine. Idumean. I D U M E A N. Idumia pertaining to Edom. Idumian pertaining to Edom. E D O M. Go ahead. Greek and Roman name for Edom. So 
I do mean it is a Greek and Roman name for Edom. So let's go back to Luke 1, 5. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. So this was an Edomite who was the king of Judah. You Listen to this, what it's saying. You had an Edomite named Herod who was the king of Judah. This makes no daggone sense. And you know what? Scholars will read by that. We got to start to say, hold on. Let's pause right there. Now give me the one in Acts uh, about Berenice. It might be chapter 22, 24, 26. It's been a while. Where it said, uh, I know that thou art expert. Oh, um. 26 and verse 2 and 3. The book of Acts, chapter 26 and verse 2. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. How was it, or why was Agrippa expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews? Because they were circumcised, they were converts. Just like Herod was. That's this, this is the same family line. They were converts to what they called Judaism. They were, they were studying all our laws and customs. That's why Rome set Herod up as king of Judah. This was a white man. He set up over us. They set up over us. And set themselves up as Jewish. That's right. They were set up as Jewish. This is the term we read about from the beginning of the lesson. Jewish, meaning converts. Everybody with me so far? Yes, sir. Watch this. Watch this. Give me Ezekiel 36.5 now. Here's more prophecy. To explain the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia, remember, Greek and Roman name for what? Edom. E-D-O-M. Go ahead. Which have appointed my land. Which have robbed my land. Into their possession. Into their possession. That's the prophecy of May 14th, 1948. Where the white man took the land and established themselves as Jewish people. Go ahead. With the joy of all their heart. With the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Yeah, they let the other nations come in and say, hey, come take a part of this land. Come take a part of this land. Come be with friends. That's what they do. So these are basic prophecies of the white man establishing themselves as Jewish people. Now watch this. Uh, Officer Alicia, give me the video by the world famous or infamous Greg Lowry. Greg Lowry. It's called Israel and Magog. We're going to start at four minutes. I want you all to watch this foolishness right here. Start at four minutes for us. I can't hear nothing. 14th, 1948. Turn it up. We go back because you missed the part where we wanted. In Bible go back. But the Bible Turn it up louder. I can barely hear it. Clearly a miraculous act. And you might say the prophetic clock started to tick. May 14th, 1948. I want you to go back a, a little bit because I'm not getting his full sentence. Prophecy. Start at three minutes. Just start at three to make it easier. All around me there are signs of the times. Last time we looked at one of the super signs of the last days which was the regathering together of the nation Israel in their homeland. And this was against all odds. It was something that had no precedent in human history that a nation would be regathered together again that had been spread to the four corners of the earth. David Jeremiah in his book what in the world is going on writes, quote, never had a decimated ancient people managed to retain their individual identity through almost 20 centuries and reestablish their nation in their original homeland. This event was specifically prophesied and it happened exactly as foretold. It was clearly a miraculous act of God, end quote. It's a super sign and Jesus said, this generation, the generation that sees this happen, will not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. So once 
The Jewish people had returned to their homeland. You might say the prophetic clock started to tick. May 14th, 1948. A very important date in Bible prophecy. Pause. The Bible not only... Just pause. I want you to notice he's not using scripture really. He's not explaining verse upon verse, precept upon precept. He'll paraphrase the scripture and just throw it out there. And the various majority of the people go, or in the audience going, yes, May 14th, 1948, the Jewish people were retained, returned to their homeland. Let me tell you something's wrong with that. Give, watch, I'm going to show you what's wrong with that. Now, we just gave some prophecies how Edom would take the land, did we not? Now, watch, let's, let me give you some more. I'm going to help you out with a little bit more. Yeah, that was scriptural. Give me Isaiah 14. This, if they're the Jews of the Bible, this is what's supposed to be happening. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers... Now, that's what they're saying. May 14th, 1940. Really? Okay, let's see if that's what it's talking about. Go ahead. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Slaves. Slaves. Where are the slaves? Where are the slaves that they're supposed to bring up over there? Read on. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. Who were these people captive to? They weren't captive to nobody. Go ahead. And they shall rule. Over their oppressors. You see that? And the Jews would rule over their... Who are they ruling? What the hell is this? Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage... Hard wherein, bondage. ...wherein thou was made to serve. You know what? It it's so funny. They say, oh, the Holocaust. Ah. Oh. Five years. You mean to tell me you're complaining... Because you suffered a little bit for five years. For five years? Five years. You mean to tell me your five years compares with over almost 500 years that we've gone through? If that's hard bondage, what was the bondage that we went through? Exactly. That's the reason why the most I put hard on there. Mm -hmm. he wants you to, he's specifying a particular bondage that is totally unforgettable. Everywhere. Exactly. Exactly. Watch this. If they're the Jews of the Bible, here's something else that'll be going on. Not only would they have slaves and rule their oppressors, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Read. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. In the top of the mountains. So the mountain of the Lord's house would be established at the top of the mountains. We've been believing. We've been to Israel. It's not at the top of no mountain. It's a, a desert in a valley. Go ahead. And shall be exalted above the hills. That land is not exalted above no governments. Go ahead. And all nations shall flow unto it. And all nations, talking about Israel coming out of all nations, they ain't flowing to that. Go ahead. And many people shall go and say, come ye. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Here it comes. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Is the law being taught out of there? It's all everywhere? No. No. All you got over there is hatred and racism, and they and knocking Palestinians upside the head and shooting them. Right, and you have right. When we were out, remember they had the damn gay parade out there. They got pork stores out there. Transgender LGBT marches. Are you, so you're you're an idiot. Which the table uh, camera? I'm looking at that one right there. You're an idiot if you think those people in Israel today are the prophetic fulfillment of scriptures that we read about. Let's go back to the video with Greg Lowry. Greg Lowry. Let's go back to him. Only said that the Lord would gather the Jews back to their homeland again. But he said that Jerusalem would be theirs and Jerusalem would end up being the source of conflict in the end times. But what's interesting is on May 14, 1948, 
Israel did not possess Jerusalem. In fact, that did not happen until the 67 war when Israeli forces captured the old city and reunified all of Jerusalem. So the city was under Jewish control for the first time in many centuries. And no, Bible prophecy it. had... Notice he keeps using the word Jewish. He knows most people don't look that word up. He's telling you, the converts, the converts, the converts took the city. The Idumeans took the city. The Edomites took the city. Read. I mean, not read, I mean, play. It had been fulfilled to a T. And that's where the rub comes in. Because Jerusalem remains at the heart of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict with many Arab leaders worldwide insisting that, insisting that Jerusalem and the entire West Bank are rightly Palestinian territory and must ultimately be given back as a condition of peace. But here's the problem with that. God gave Israel and the city of Jerusalem to the Jewish people. He made conference. that promise. It belongs to him, and they're not going to give it up, nor should they. And this is where the conflict comes from as a result of this. Pause. Pause right resort. there. He's talking about the conflict between the Palestinians and the Jewish, ish, ish, wish. They wish they're the Jews. They wish they're the Jews. The conflict. Here's the conflict. Joel chapter 3, verse 3. Book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 3. Where is it? Okay, verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot. Wait, wait, I mean two. I want verse 2. I apologize. Verse 2. Yes, sir. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. And parted my land. See that part right there? And parted my land? Greg Lau, we just told you who it's parted between. It's parted between the Palestinians and the Jewish people. That's what Joel 3 and 2 is talking about. That's the, convert, the controversy right there. Where the Jewish people, which are Idumeans, Edomites, arguing and fighting with so-called Arabs, Palestinians. Go back to Isaiah 2. Because ain't, once the Jews go back to the land of real Jews, ain't supposed to be no conflict. Right. Read verse 4. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. You know what that means? When the 12 tribes of Israel return to the land, there's going to be world peace. That's right. you understand that? Is there world peace today? Nope. Hell no. So they are not the biblical Jews at all. Let's go back. What do you say, else up? You know what's amazing? Foreign policy and the people in the United Nations is trying to make you think that that move in 1940 and all of the efforts that they're trying to make everybody uh, believe that those are the Jews. They're fighting biblical prophecy trying to say that that move in, for, in 1948 is the establishment of the Jews. But here's, here's the main thing about it. We're talking about this corona thing and everybody's running crazy, right? Yeah. Pandemonium and all that. Imagine the pandemonium that's going to hit or the pandemic pandemonium is going to hit when they find out that you are the real Jews all over that's this right. planet Earth. That's, you ain't seen no daggone craziness. Wait till that information really hits when they have, when they come to realize, say, you know what? These are the people of God. I mean, we're in trouble. Exactly. That's going to be a hell of a deal. Exactly. And they're trying to stop that by trying to establish these people as the Jews. Exactly. Let's go back to Greg Lowry just for a moment. Greg Lowry. Go ahead. You understand the determination of the Jewish people to want to hold on to Jerusalem. But, of course, they have come through horrors that are unthinkable. As Tim LaHaye wrote in his book, Are We Living in the End Times? Quote, the smell of the Holocaust is still too fresh in their memories, end quote. Take a trip through a museum in Israel like Yad Vashem that is dedicated to the memory of the six million Jews that died in the Holocaust. 
or walk to the corridors of the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. and look at what these people have suffered and you'll get a better understanding of the determination of the Jewish people to possess their land and their capital, the city of Jerusalem. But you have to understand that the Bible went out on a limb, so to speak, with these predictions. And as I've said before, the Bible is the one book that dares to predict right the future. Pause right there. Yeah, the Bible does predict the future. It said that Idumia would take the land. That's what we read about. They always talk about uh, six million during a five-year span. Let's, six million, six alleged six million. I'll give them this alleged six million. I'll, okay, you take those six million during your five years. But let's do the hundreds and hundreds of millions that died for the past 500 years. And I'm talking about from 1492 on up. I started in 1619. I'm talking about 1492. All the way up to now. Daniel 9, 12, please. Watch what God says. The book of oh, Daniel. Oh, five years. They suffered for five years. Oh, six million. <laughs> really? Come on. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2. 12. Excuse me, verse 12. And he had confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us. So God confirmed his words to us and our judges. Go ahead. By bringing upon us a great evil. The Lord brought upon the 12 tribes of Israel a great evil. The great evil is Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 15 through 68. Slavery, colonialism. Loss of identity, loss of heritage, loss of country and land. Read. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. You hear what God said about us? There's nothing under the whole heaven that has been done like has been done to us. So, Bishop, when you hear the term hard bondage, that's pointing to the people that suffered hard bondage. God just told you right there that that's Jerusalem. Exactly. Hey, here's one more. Here's another precept for that. If I could just find it. It's in Lamentations. Whoever know where it is, find it for me. He said, what shall I like uh, equal to you? Where is it at? Somebody find it. Somebody help me out. 215? All right. If you know where it is, call it out. Let me know. Let me help, uh, help me out here. Oh, 13. Read that. Lamentation chapter 2, verse 13. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? And what thing shall I liken unto thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee? What? Because people say, oh, what we went through is equal to what y'all went There's no nation on earth that you can equal to what happened to the 12, tribe of, 12 tribes of Israel, so-called blacks and Latinos and Native American Indians. Let me say it again in case I studied. There's no nation on earth that you can equal in terms of atrocity what happened to blacks Latinos and Native American Indians, not one nation. You cannot compare a five-year holy cost to what happened to us. Read the verse again. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? The destruction that happened to us Jeremiah said it's great like to see who can heal this. That's why Christ had to come. Only Christ could heal it. We were totally destroyed. Imagine this. Being cast out and chased from our homeland from 70 AD on. Being slaughtered day after day. Hunted in, a, in the continent of Africa. Being forced to mingle in and, learn, and, and, and mingle in and blend with the Hamitic tribes down there. Okay. Losing our, when going into slavery and being colonized, losing our identity, our language, our culture, our heritage, being whipped and beaten, raped and castrated. From, um, and I'm only talking about from, from that time, from 1492 on up. You cannot compare. Over to, and they said during a slave voyage from the Middle Passage, from Africa to the United States. They said 200 million died during the Middle Passage. That's just, and they said over 700 million North American Indians were slaughtered. Talking about from North America down to South, over 700 million. And you're going to throw out a measly 6 million during a five-year span? Are you an idiot? And you blacks 
Because we was in um, freaking Nigeria. Who was there with me? You, the Negro, the Igbo Negro, said that what the Jewish people suffered for five years was worse than what blacks suffered. You know the audience cursed his ass you behind out. They dropped every F-bomb you can imagine on this old fool. Well, he was older than us. He was an idiot. And you get a lot of that brainwashing. White man got some powerful brainwashing. Yeah, B- Bishop, the thing you just 77 said... 77 million, North American. Yeah, yeah, but over 200 million from north down to south. Go ahead. Yeah, the thing you just said, take, take away our identity, take everything we earn, right? That's a crime. That's a big crime to all humanity. <laughs> yeah, think about it. We're in the bottom, somebody... Somebody take everything from you. You understand? That's a crime. He needs to be judged for his crime. You understand? And then why they're sitting there lying on TV. You know me what I was watching when the homeboy was talking? The, the, uh, yeah, the white boy was talking. You see how confident he is in his lies? Yes, yes. It's the same, his whole business uh, 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 things on earth. You see me how they're so confident in, in their lie? That's why I'm watching. I'm like, that's the same spirit that's showing, uh, 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 what was it, that uh, in, in New York? The stock market, mm-hmm. whatever they're, they're into, is a lie, bold, lie spirit that cover white people, man. Exactly. Watch this. Aristide, former president Aristide of Haiti, he attempted to sue France for the slavery that they endured. You know what? France said, you owe us for the monies we lost for not having you as slaves. And, and Haiti got to pay them back. Can you, can you, can you imagine this evil stupidity? Yeah, that's some diabolical right. We owe you right. for the money you lost from having us as slaves. That's, if y'all don't know what evil is, just that's, think about that. That's the white man being the devil. That's it right there. He's, the, he's that devil that the Bible speaks of. That's the same that thing. Something that, else. That's the same thing these demons doing to Africa right now. They told Africa, I tell you what, you, you, you put your money in our bank. We give it to you when you need it. We're going to take your money. <laughs> We're going to invest it and make more money. Do not put your own money in your own bank. No, that's not done work with us. But they go behind that. They collected $500 billion from Africa resource. Think about it. They go in your country. They took $500 billion out of your resource, you own children who have no shoes to put on their feet. The money you make, they say, I tell you what, I'm going to let you borrow $40 million, but you got to still give me $500 bill. Wait a minute, why would I give you $500 billion when I need $40 million that I got to come to you? Who the hell are you? That's the devil. Bishop, that statement that you made, that, that thing didn't sink in those heads about that France, France and Haiti. France basically looked and said, listen, America got paid by robbing us. And they said that they said they got a chance to exploit, rape, rob, and murder. And what that did, that set America up on a higher status than France. So France said, wait a minute. You owe us because we didn't get what America got. So you got to pay so that we can be at least close to the robbery that America did to the so-called Negroes. Exactly. Just think about that. Exactly. And think about it. Guinea in Africa, Guinea, who cried for independence around 1958 from France. France said, you want independence from us? They said, okay, burn down their hospitals, burn down their schools, fill up their the, the, uh, sewers with cement, destroy their farms. Now that then they say, okay, we're gone now. You're independent. You going to tell me that that's the people of God? That they, white people, suffer more than us? You are insane to even, I wouldn't give it a second thought when somebody says that. I look at them and laugh in scorn. That's because of such evil. Such, such evil. Let's go on back to Greg Lowey. Because he ain't, this devil ain't finished. Not once, not twice, but hundreds of times. We have so many prophecies that have been made and have been fulfilled that we can look back now in retrospect. And then there are those prophecies that are being fulfilled and prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled. But understand this. It's not a big stretch for God to predict the future. It's not any more amazing that God can speak of the future than you could speak of the past. 
In fact, I would even take it a step further and say, God can predict the future far more accurately than you and I can recall the past. Because a lot of times I forget things. My wife seems to remember every detail of everything, you know. And, and the funny thing is I'll come home from some event or something I did or, and I'll tell her about what happened. And then I'll be re-describing it two days later to someone and my wife will say, no, you got it wrong. This is what happened. I said, you weren't even there. She said, well, I was there when you told me the first time and you've left out a few details. You told me that, fine, you know. So I can't even remember the past accurately. But God, with perfect retention, knows the past, of course. But then He can speak of the future because, listen, God lives in the eternal realm. So God can speak of the future with as much accuracy as He can speak of the past. It's all the same to Him. Tomorrow is like yesterday to God. So when God says, this is going to happen, it's not taking a risk. It's just God saying, I know it's going to happen because I'm eternal and it's going to happen. So He is telling us Jerusalem will be the capital of Israel. They will be the source of conflict. So let's just take out our checklist Wait, of stop, events. Stop. Pause right already there. When He said Jerusalem will be the capital of Israel, He's referring to when President Donald Trump moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That's He trying to establish division. Now go back a, 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 a few seconds. I want you to get this thought that he's about to say. Watch this. Go ahead. So he's telling us Jerusalem will be the capital of Israel. They will be the source of conflict. So let's just take out our checklist of events and see what's already transpired. Transpire. The Bible says Israel will be scattered to the four corners of the earth. Did that happen? Yes. Check. Stop. Pause right Israel there. Will be stop. Stop. So they're saying that these white people that came from Poland, Germany, Czechoslovakia, Uzbekistan, that that's the four corners of the earth. These people are idiots. That whoever believes that is an idiot. Go back a few seconds. I want to get the whole thought. They will be the source of conflict. So let's just take out our checklist of events and see what's already transpired. Transpire. The Bible says Israel will be scattered to the four corners of the earth. Did that happen? Yes. Check. Israel will be regathered together. Did that happen? Yes. Check. Stop right there. It Pause. Ask the white men in Israel, where is the tribe of Issachar? Where is Manasseh? Where is Gad? Where is Reuben? Where is Benjamin? Huh? Where is Ephraim and uh, 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 Zebulon, Naphtali? Where are they at? Uh, 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 uh. You see how these people lie? They just lie. And our people, that's what you really got to get on. Our people in these churches fall for the, for the okie doke. Because of the whiteness, because of this red pink skin. He just says it and says, check it happened. Everybody in the audience nods and goes, yes, it happened. Are you kidding me? Go back, Alicia. Israel will be regathered together in the homeland of Israel from which they were scattered. Has that happened? Yes. Check. Israel will regain the city of Jerusalem again. Has that happened? Yes. Check. That's Donald Israel Trump. will be isolated from the other nations of the world. Is this happening? Yes. Then why are they check. all over here? Some little Israel red Israel will be attacked by a nation to her north, bent on her destruction. Has that happened? Not yet. Oh, God. But it's in process. Oh, my God. Now, he's, yes. he's basing that on Ezekiel uh, 38. But Ezekiel 38 ain't talking about them people that live over there. When y'all, I'm going to just show you real quick. I ain't going to go just for another class, but I just want to show you Ezekiel 38. This is what they use. Because this is what his whole sermon is based on. Ezekiel 38. When Gog and Magog goes against the land of Jerusalem. Now, they use this chapter to go, see, this is what's going to happen. Let me show you how th it's not talking about them. Uh, mm -hmm, and thou shalt come on the plane. Let me see. Bear with me a second. Around 14? Yeah, let's read verse 8. Verse Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 8. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Brought back from the sword, meaning brought back from destruction. Brought back from judgment. Go ahead. And is gathered out of many people. The Israelites will come out of many people, of many nations. Go ahead. Against the mountains of Israel. They will come against the mountains of Israel. Watch this. Which have been always 
waste. Even to this day, the land is always waste. Go ahead. But it is brought forth out of the nations. But it is brought forth out of the nations. And they shall dwell safely, all of them. Are those people over there dwelling safely? Nope. Hell no. So this chapter is not talking about this time period. It ain't talking about that. Now why? I mean, there's some more. Uh, look at verse 11. Yeah, verse 11. Thank you. Verse 11. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. This is what the nations will say. Thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. Go ahead. I will go to them that are at rest. Are they at rest over there? No. 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 Go ahead. That dwell safely. They don't dwell safely over there. There's always some kind of problem over there. Go ahead. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. We've been there. There's bars and gates around the land. So this has nothing to do with those people over there today. In fact, if you want to know what this is really talking about, we've gone over it before. Go to Revelation 20. This is what it's talking about. Revelation chapter 20. Let me see the verse. Is it verse 4? Where is it? Where am I going? Somebody help me. Uh, three. Is it 3? Let me look. Revelation, after many years, should I be visited? Uh, verse 8. Verse 8. Start Re at 7. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. The white man shall be loosed out of his prison after a thousand year reign of Christ. Watch this. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Let's see what some of these nations' names. Go ahead. Gog. And Magog. That's Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. Gog and Magog. Go ahead. To gather them together to battle. Uh huh. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Read. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. The saints are Israelites when we're brought back to the land. When the 12 tribes of Israel are brought back to the land after a thousand year reign with Christ, Satan going to be loose, try and come up against us again. Read. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Yeah, you can read about that in Obadiah verse 18. So, now let's go back to Revelation 2. If y'all got it, you got it. If you slow, you blow. I don't know if y'all caught that thing right there. That's an old school expression. They go, I don't get that thing. Go back to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9 again. I'm a, I'm a, what time is it? All right, I'm going to speed it up a little bit because I kind of lingered on that. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So that's talking about Idumia, Edom. That's who it's talking about. Go ahead. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Uh-oh, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Let me give an example of the devil Casting some of our people here in Smyrna into prison. Give me Acts 12, 1 through 5. I want to see who the devil is. So do you think it's some type of racist rhetoric? The book who of Acts. is the devil casting people into prison? Go ahead. Chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now about that time, Herod the king. Herod the king, that's an Idumean leader, an Edomite. Go ahead. Stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Now, Herod was of Rome. Go ahead. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. Put him where? In prison. What did Rome do? Put him in prison. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. I hope y'all wrote that down. So understand this. This is not any kind of racist rhetoric. This is straight Bible fact. Let's go on back to Revelation 2 now. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. Mm -hmm. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. So Christ told the church of Shmurna, you're going to have tribulation ten days. Go ahead. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He said, be thou faithful until death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Give me that in uh, Psalms 116, verse 15. 
Psalms 116, verse 15. The book of Psalms, chapter 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. That's why Christ told the church of Smyrna, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Back to Revelation 2, verse 11, please. Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. He that, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. If you overcome, he says, you will not be hurt of the second death. Well, what is the second death? Go to Revelation 20. Verse 11, what is the second death? Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Meaning when the Lord comes, nobody got nothing to say. I want you women to understand that you ain't arguing with God. Ain't going to be no if, ands, or but, except before whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. That's how dreadful it's going to be. Read. And there was found no place for them. Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. So John saw the dead, small and great. Go ahead, stand before the Lord. Read. And the books were open. And the books, plural, were open. Meaning the Bible and the books on your life were opened. Read. And another book was open, which is the book of life. Mm -hmm. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead. You know how people like to say, I don't want to be buried in the ground. Scatter my ashes in the water, in the sea. Or ships have crashed like the Titanic. Right. The unsinkable Titanic. Right. And all them uh, Edomites died in the ocean with Leonardo DiCaprio in the movie. Read that part again. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead. Right. Those that's in the earth, in the grave, in the mountains. Go ahead. Which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So the second death is the judgment of all people on the planet earth. Christ told the church of Smyrna, if you endure to the end, you, the second death will have no power on you. You don't have to fear that. Jump over to verse, uh, say in the same book, verse 5. Is it five? Where does it say second death? It's someplace uh, in here. Y'all help me out here. Second death, second death, second death. Uh, oh, verse, yeah, read five and six together. Revelation chapter 21, verse... 20. I want 20, uh, verse five and six. Chapter 20, verse five. And it says, uh, But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. So the rest of the dead live not again. That is your mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers who heard the truth and rejected it and died in their sins. They're not going to live again until the thousand years are over. Then they're going to stand before the Lord on that fatal day of judgment day. Read on. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. Go ahead. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. The first resurrection is when the Lord returns. That's the key. The first resurrection is when the Lord returns and gathers the elect. We all are in here because we want to be part of that. Am I right? Yes, sir. So that's why we're all in this truth. We want to be part of the first resurrection. Go ahead. On such, the second death have no power. We don't got to worry about that, that last day of judgment. It has no power over us because we've already been judged. That's why we were resurrected first. That's the first resurrection. Why? We get a crown of glory. That's when it says, death, where is your sting? It says, the, uh, the wage of sin, what does it go, Romans 6? The wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That's what we want, eternal life. We ain't got to worry about that second death. Second death, come, that's that next judgment. That's, hey, bye, ma, bye, dad. Shalom, I tried to warn you behind, but you didn't listen. Nothing I could do for you now. Nothing at all. Bye bye. So now let's go back to Revelation two. I know y'all. He sound mean up there talking about mommy and daddy. I'm talking about your mother and your father. <laughs> Revelation chapter two again, and we are in verse eleven. Verse eleven. Revelation chapter two, verse eleven. Uh huh. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. If we overcome, overcome our own. 
trials and tribulations, overcome the evils throughout the countries wherein we dwell, we won't have to worry about the second death. It says, he that overcome shall not be hurt of the second death. Verse 12 now. Verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right. Now, angel again means leader. Leaders, go ahead. These things saith he which had the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Now, during that time, notice what it says. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Pergamos was a large city that dealt, dwelt, that dealt with a lot of demonic activity. Satan's seat was there. Watch this. I'm going to show you some of these last days. Give me that. I believe it's Isaiah. Is it 47 or Nahum? It's one of those two books. Bear with me. Let me look at, let me take again. Let me go to Nahum chapter 3. Yeah. Let me check that. Nahum chapter 3. Nahum chapter 3. Uh, let me look. Mm. Mm. Verse 4. Nahum chapter 3 verse 4. Now, this is talking about Nineveh in a first literal sense, but it's also a metaphor for America. I said something right there. Whoever get it, get it. You don't, you don't. Read verse 4, please. Nahum chapter 3, verse 4. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. The well-favored harlot is the United States of America. Remember it said, uh, mystery, Babylon the Great, abomination of the earth, mother of harlots. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not quoting. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, Revelation 17, 5. Mother of harlots. Here it calls it well-favored harlot. I, everybody loved that hoe here. Everybody loved this hole called America. Read. The mistress of witchcraft. Y'all see the end? It calls America the mistress of witchcraft. Haiti thought they got witchcraft. America said, no, you ain't got nothing on us. We are the mistress of witchcrafts. Go ahead. That selleth nations through her whoredoms. That selleth nations. Have we not been sold? You better believe it. We've been sold in slavery. All 12 tribes have been sold. It says that selleth nations through her whoredoms. Go ahead. And families through her witchcraft. And families through her witchcrafts. That's some heavy stuff right there. So now, let's go back to Revelation 2 and verse... That was 13 you was at? That was verse 13. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay, read it again. Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, and where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name. He said, thou holdest fast my name. Go ahead. And has not denied my faith. And has not denied my faith. I want to pause on that a second. Give me that in, um, find me that, because I didn't write it down. Find me the scripture where Christ said, he that is ashamed of me. Who knows what that is? Of my words. In this evil and adulterous generation. Who knows what that is? Somebody find me that. Find me that. Get it. Luke 9, 26. Let me hear it. The book of Luke, chapter 9, and verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. So we are not to be ashamed of the words of the Bible at all. Never be ashamed. So it says back in Revelation 2, what verse was we at? 13. Verse 13, it says, and has not denied my faith. Go ahead. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. So Antipas was a disciple who was slaughtered and killed here in Pergamos. Give me that in Luke 21, verse 16. Christ said something about us dying. Now listen good. Everybody is not going to physically die in terms of being murdered. Everybody's not. Luke 21, is it verse 16, I think? 
Uh, Read yes, it. yes, sir. Luke 21, verse 16. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk. Have we, even in this time, we've been betrayed. We have been, have we not seen betrayal in 2018? Yes, sir. We've been betrayed on a major level, and it's going to get worse. Go ahead. And friends. And friends, so-called friends, brothers and sisters that sat with us, ate with us, break bread with us, watched our children. We watched their children. We travel with them. They betray, some of them betrayed us. Go ahead. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. That's the part I wanted to get to. Some, 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 not all, some of you shall be put to death. Some of us are slotted to die in this truth, meaning being put to death. Some. Let's go back. Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. Mm -hmm. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So here's another uh, division in the church. This is why I prefaced it with 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10 and 11, where Paul said, I got a problem with you. Some of you say you only follow Paul. Some of you say you only follow Peter. Some of you say you only follow Paulus. And the last group say you don't, you don't follow no man, you follow Christ. So now you got these issues in these churches here. You had a group in the church who followed the doctrine of Balaam. What is the doctrine of Balaam? Give me 2 Peter 2.15. What is the doctrine of Balaam? I'm going to go with Peter first. Then I'm going to backtrack. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the ways of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. I want you brothers and sisters to listen good to me about this part here. Balaam loved the wages of unrighteousness. He was covetous. All he was about was the money. The, most of the group, I've worded that like that for a reason. Most of the group that ran up out of here, they loved the wages of unrighteousness. One little Hispanic boy said, I will never do another art for IUIC unless you pay me to do the work. And we're like, bro, this work is not for us. This is to exhort the people. This is for the Lord's work. He said, no, pay me. All he was about was money. Meet him, meet him. Read it again. Verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way. And are which have forsaken the right way. And are hey, some of them held us hostage on videos. Yes, some of them went to school to do videos. You know, like the Passover. We had to wait a year for the next Passover video to come out. For anything, we had to wait a whole year. And guess what the Lord did? He said, I got other brothers that's going to be able to do it quick. Don't worry about these, these dudes. And they're going to do it better. That's why everybody was shocked when you had Yuri and Solomon and other brothers put the videos up, like, was it within a minute, an hour, the same day? We was like, what the hell is this? This has never been done before. Them damn Hispanic brothers held us hostage for years. Wouldn't do nothing unless they got money. Wicked as hell. Let's read that again. Which have forsaken the right way. Which have forsaken the right way. And are gone astray. And are gone astray. Following the way of Balaam. They have followed the ways of Balaam. That's who we just read about in Revelation. Go ahead. The son of Bozar. The son of Bozar. Who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Who loved money. Money. Money, 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 money. Make my teeth white. Huh? Yeah, money, money. I got came to my voice. Money, 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 money. Y'all remember that song? Yeah. Some people got to have it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, some people still are sitting up in here follow Balaam. Some people still follow Balaam. They don't give a damn about this truth. They look at the videos and go, Remember, remember, there was a certain Israelite. I ain't going to call his little raggedy name. He said, freeze the video. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. give me a pen. And started counting heads. One, yeah. two, three. Then started doing multiplication on shirts and posters. All his whole thing was money. And not just this one group. A lot of them groups. 
Because then they say, you know what I could do with that money? I got five wives. I could buy them all new cars and new shoes and this and that. Listen, that, it ain't right. It ain't about the Lord at all. It's taking care of them hoes they got, the multiple hoes. That's what it's about. Read that again, yeah, verse Bishop, 15. Yes. Remember that brother that was sitting by the door counting how many garments? Yes, the brother that used to be with us. Counting he garments. With us. He was counting how many parts of a garment. So he's like, oh yeah, he, that brother make that amount of money. He make this amount of money. It was all about money. Exactly. So, J Christ reminded John for the church of, what church was that? Um, that was Pergamon, right? Yes, sir. About some of them in the church followed the doctrine of Balaam. Peter said Balaam loved the wages of unrighteousness. All he cared about was money. He didn't give a damn about the gospel. Let's get some more. What else? What other qualities did he have? Numbers 25 and 1. Numbers 25, verse 1. Something else, too. The book of Numbers, chapter 25 and verse 1. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Now, y'all notice this. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom. Whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Now, you may say, okay, now what does this got to do with Balaam? Watch this. Numbers 31, verse 15. 31, verse 15. Watch what Moses said about this. The book of Numbers, chapter 31 and verse 15. And Moses said unto them, have you saved all the women alive? Because we went to war. And Moses said, have you saved all these women alive? Go ahead. Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. So you see what happened? Balaam gave counsel. He said, we can't beat the men. They're going to destroy you. But I got an idea. Send women amongst them. Remember during the turbulent 60s, when you had the black pan, all them black radical groups, what did white men do? Send the white woman. They did a joke on it in that movie, uh, Undercover Brother with Eddie Griffin. They said, we can't take them down. Send in the black man's kryptonite. Then you had the white woman in the white leather outfit, the long blonde hair, come in slow motion. You know what uh, 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 Dave Chappelle said? Everything looked good in slow motion. So the white woman came walking in with a tight leather outfit on, white, light, white tight leather outfit on, doing the hair like Betty with the good hair. What is her name? Not Betty. What's her name? Uh, Betty, Becky, Becky with the good hair, flowing it back. And Eddie Griffin, all the brothers in the team was like, uh, uh. So Balaam said, send in the white woman. So I said that to say this. There was, a, there was some stats done that said once the Loving case, remember Loving v. Loving against Virginia, the first interracial couple that got married, they said after that, black men, black and Latino men went crazy. They said there's no other race that has done among men, talk about men, the gender of males, have done more interracial marriage than black and Hispanic men. No other race can compare to you guys. That removed, the that remo yeah. Once they did that thing. They said, you look at all the other men of the other nations. They said, not like the black and uh, Hispanic man has done. They love marrying outside their race, their people. So, when a white man and other nations send in their women, believe me, it's for a political reason. And notice what they do. I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. Anytime you get a black man who makes good money, rich, whether he's an athlete, an entertainer, you got a certain group of white women that they send in. And these, these white women, I ain't talking about the group y'all be seeing, the fat ones with missing teeth. I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about the good-looking ones with the perky breastuses and who got a badunk -a dunk I ain't talking about the long back species of whites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the ones that they look like, you know what you say, the Kardashians? Look, they to go on in there and then bring that money back home to daddy. Then all of a sudden you find yourself dead and all that money you had goes to her and she goes, look daddy, I got us some money just like you taught me to do. That's what happened. And black men ain't figured that SH out yet. Yes. Like that show Greenleaf. Remember the white girl? The pastor's daughter? Yes. Same thing. He sent her to... Yeah. If y'all see Greenleaf, they show you that in the Christian church where they send the, the white woman in to get with the black man because the black man wanted to be a pastor. The white man said, if you want to be pastor over this, because he had a mega church, 
you gonna marry my daughter. Because why? He was gonna break or bring all that money in. The mega church would make millions of dollars, and it was gonna go to her. Marriage has always been a political institution. Black and Hispanic men, y'all ain't figured that out yet. She loves me. Mama, she loves me. She don't love you. It's political. Love is love. You can't, you can't say, yeah, God love, love. You can't say who's supposed to love. You black, we are simple as hell. Yeah, yeah Bishop, especially the people you're referring to, they will even sleep with dog. Mm. Yeah, you remember in Africa, they were trying to get some land from the Africans. Yes. What they was doing, marriages act like they love the Africans so they can get their land. That's right. They was doing that in uh, Africa, sending in the Chinese. And then the, the, the black women in Uganda and Sierra Leone, Chinese men go, I love you. I love you. You are so beautiful. The dumb black ashy women out there, oh, he loved me. Hong Si Kwa loved me. I'm going to marry him. As soon as they say, I do, Hong Si Kwan goes to the court and say, I, I have right to the land. I'm married to one of your citizens. I want to purchase this land here. He gets the land in his name and leaves that black, ashy woman right there with the little half-breed baby. And now she, it was Liberia also, crying to the government. The Chinese are leaving us with babies and not taking care of them. The African leaders said, we, we have no power to do nothing. Except don't allow them back into the country. Now they're going to raise a little half-breeds like the Israelites. Oh, my baby's an Israelite. Why the eyes like that? Why they got their head like that? What, what, is, what do you mean that's an Israelite? Who the daddy? Who the daddy? I'm the puppy. Oh, Tom the puppy. The hell is this? Get out. I ain't no Israelite. Let's go on back now. We back in Revelation 2. What verse we at? We are at verse 15. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. So again, in this church also, you have some there that held the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which worship the Greek god Nike, the Greek god of victory. So you had these idolaters in the congregation. Go ahead. Verse 16. Repent. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He said, that group, I'm going to fight against them with the word of God. I'm going to kill them. That's what he's warning them in uh, Pergamos. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Now that hidden manna right there, the hidden manna. Give me the... Uh, John 6, 31. What is the hidden manna? Remember when we came out of Egypt, God uh, sent manna from heaven so that we could eat. And we were satisfied and made healthy by that. It, they called it angel's food. Okay? So give me that in John 6, 31. John chapter 6, verse 31. Watch what Christ says about that manna from heaven. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Mm. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. For the bread of God is he, is he. Christ is teaching us that manna from heaven represented him. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read it again. Uh, verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Mm -hmm. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Unto the world of Israel. Read. Verse 34. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Give us this bread, Lord, evermore. Come on, go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. So Christ said, I am the bread of life. That manna from heaven, that represents me. I am the bread of life. Go ahead. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He said, if you come to me, you follow me, you will never be hungry again. Go ahead. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And you will never thirst. Read. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. He said, you've seen me, but yet you don't believe. They saw the miracles that Christ did. They heard the great wisdom. 
but they still did not believe. Read. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. See that? Those of us that come to Christ, we were chosen by the Father already. The Father said, this one's going to come to Christ. This one. And guess what? They're going to stay with Christ. Go ahead. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He said, if you come to me in sincerity, I'm not going to cast you away. Read. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent See me. See that Christ said, I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Watch this. Watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians 4.3, please. We're going to come back. 2 Corinthians 4.3. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 3. About that hidden man. Now watch this. But if our gospel be hid. If our gospel be hid. Remember, we were reading about the hidden manner. The hidden manner represents Christ and what he taught. He said, I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of the Father that sent me. Now Paul says about that. He said, if our gospel be hid. Go ahead. It is hid. To them that are lost. You don't understand who Christ is? You don't understand the black Messiah came for the nation of Israel? You're lost. I can't help you. Go ahead. In whom the God of this world have blinded. Because you love the white man. The white man is the God of this world. Go ahead. Blinded the minds of them which believe not. Mm. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Let's go back to John 6. It started 47. John chapter 6, verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. He says it again. He's repeating it. I am that bread of life. I am that manna that Moses sent from heaven. Go ahead. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Let me tell you about that manna that came from heaven. Your forefathers ate it, and guess what? They are all dead dead. Go ahead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. He said, if you learn from me, you will not die. Go ahead. I am the living bread. I am the living bread. Go ahead. Which came down from heaven. He said, I came down from heaven. Go ahead. If any man eat of this bread, you learn of me. That's what he says. Eat. He's talking about you learn of me. That's all he means. Go ahead. He shall live forever. You shall live forever. Go ahead. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. That's why we do the breaking of bread. Go ahead. Which I will give for the life of the world. I'm going to give my life for the life of the world of the Israelites. Let's go back to Revelation 2, please. Revelation 2, 17, please. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And will give him a white stone. And will give him a white stone. Watch this. Read. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Now, he said, I'm going to give you a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saves he that receiveth it. The only one that's going to understand is the one that receives this white stone. You're going you're gonna to have a new name. Let me tell you about your new name. Your new name is your true name. I'm going to say it again. Your new name is your true name. I'm going to give you a precept. Give me 2 Ezra 9.18. 2 Ezra 9.18. Ezra 9.18. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 9 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. And now, this is the Lord speaking, when I prepared the world, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made. Which was not yet made. Even for them to dwell in that now live. Even for them to dwell in that now live. Talking about the Israelites. No man speak against me. You didn't speak against me. So what is he saying? We were all with him in the very beginning. We were all with him in the beginning before he prepared the world. We were there. That's why we didn't speak against him. We were there and we were all in agreement to what God's plan was. What do you do? He wiped, give me that uh, Ecclesiastes 1 about there's no mem memory. Give me that. 1 verse 11. Well, why don't I remember? The Bible teaches you why you don't remember. Now, I know this might go over a lot of your heads. Some of y'all go, what? I just came out of my mama's behind last week. No, no, 
No, you didn't. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things. There's no remembrance of former things, meaning the Former lives we had, there's no remembrance. Was that the whole verse? No, sir. Go ahead. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. That's why when the, when the people ask John the Baptist, are you Elijah that the scriptures prophesy? John said no. But then Christ came and said, John is Elijah. And what the hell do you mean John is Elijah? He just said he's not. Read verse 11 again, the top part. There is no remembrance of former things. Things. There's no remembrance of former things. Go back to 2nd Ezra 9 18 again now. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 18. And now, when I prepared the world which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man speak against me. You see that? So, in the beginning, before everything was made, when in the spirit world, God chose certain spirits to come down on the earth as the Israelites. And we all agreed in that council. Now we're here in this flesh with no remembrance of all things that happened. So we get to uh, Revelation 2 again, and he made a profound statement. Verse 17 again. Come Revelation on. chapter 2, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written. Which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. You on that day, you're going to know. I know you think your name is Rahim. Your name ain't Rahim. And you got Shanae and Shaniqua over here. That ain't your names. We all have true names. What are you going to say, Aethan? Go ahead. Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62, verse 1, real quick. This is where John, well, this is where um, John got it from. Well, Isaiah 62, verse 1. 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. Because he's going to save us eventually. Go ahead. And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. I mean, we guarantee deliverance. Watch this verse. Verse 2 is the part. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. Because we'll be ruling. Watch this. And thou shalt be called by a new name. Read again. And thou shalt be called by a new name. Watch this. Which the mouth of the Lord shall name. The only you'll know. So when the Lord calls you by that name, you'll know that's your name. For example, which is heavy, when the Lord says in Revelation also that the Messiah has a name that no man knows but he himself. Right. His true name. So no one has the Lord's true name, and we don't have our true names. Right. Like all of us say, I might not. Malachi, that's the names we gave ourselves. Mm -hmm. and the, that's the name the Lord gave us. Right. So in the kingdom, we're going to have our true names. The Lord will say, no, I done. That's not your name. Your name is so-and-so. I will say, oh, yeah, it is my name. Because it will be brought back to my remembrance. Mm -hmm. Vice versa for everyone in the room. Lord's will. Mm -hmm. So, and likewise, they'll say, oh, your name is Yeshua. No. Yahweh No. That's Christ. Not my name. Christ. No, that's not my name. This is my name. Yeah, everyone, got the, everyone, everyone, the Lord himself, will have their true name. Everyone. And will know the Father's name also. Mm -hmm. All that. That's what all names to be revealed. The argument is his name. Use his name. No, that's nonsense. We're all going to know each other's names, true names, the son's name and the father's name in the kingdom. That's what this is saying. Mm -hmm. Let's get Not that. today. In Revelation 3, 12. The book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. Because Deacon just said about Christ got a new name that nobody knows but he himself. Read. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. To be made a pillar means to be made a leader. Go ahead. And he shall go no more out. You ain't going to go out into captivity no more. Go ahead. And I will write upon him the name of my God. I'm going to write upon you the name of the Father. Go ahead. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. And I'm going to give you the name of Jerusalem too. Go ahead. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God. Go ahead. And I will write upon him my new name. And I'm going to teach you my new name. Those are the names we had from way back, the very, very beginning, before the world was made. Everybody understand that? I know that's some deep stuff right there. Some of you are, I don't get it. I'm confused. Well, you just stay there a little while. You'll be all right next year. Right now, you just hold on. Let's go back to Revelation 2. We're almost done. What verse we in, Captain Amaziah? Verse 17. Mm -hmm. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 
To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So stop arguing over names, all right? Y'all on the street, oh, ah, you name Yahweh Shai. No, it's Christ. No, it's Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Yahshua. You hate wild hate. Stop it. You sound like idiots. You sound black. Stop. The white man goes by and says, they're black. Listen to them. They argue the, we're taking over, white man taking over the whole planet Earth, and Negroes are arguing about names. <laughs> Read. Verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira. Write, write this down. Thyatira is Greek for daughter. It means daughter. Read it again. Or Thyatira. Right. Read that again. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira. Now watch this. Give me Acts 16, 14 to give you a brief history on this church. Because you read about Ephesus in the book of Ephesians, that's Ephesus. And you read about Thyatira in Acts 16, 14. The book of Acts, chapter 16, and verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. So when she heard Paul teaching in Thyatira, hey, put the, uh, the map up again of, Thyat of uh, the seven churches. So we can get a brief location of where it is, an idea of where it is. Alicia, you over there? Okay. Zoom in. Right. So you can see Thyatira is under the church of Pergamum. There's Thyatira, T-H-Y-A-T-I-R-A, -A, right there. Okay, let's go back. Revelation 2.18. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, right, these things saith the Son of God. Who have his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and That's his Christ, mm -hmm. and his feet are like fine brass. Mm -hmm. I know that I know thy works and charity. And charity is a Greek word for love. This charity means the love you have for neighbors, for brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And service. And service. That's Leviticus twenty-five fifty-five. Go ahead. And faith. Come on. And thy patience and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. So their last works superseded their first works. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. He said, I got a few things against you. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now this Jezebel, listen good, this Jezebel is not the Jezebel you read about in the book of Kings. Two different time periods. Y'all understand that? We saw a test. A brother said that Jezebel is married to Ahab. Damn. Well, spiritually, she is. If your wife is a Jezebel, you are an Ahab. Ouch. What are the qualities of an Ahab? Weak, mentally insecure, allows the wife to do whatever the hell she wants. Some of you men listening are Ahab. Some of you men listening are married to Jezebel. Jezebel is sitting in here. Jezebel is listening online. Some of them. Read it again. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach. Now stop right there. Hey, Elisha, can you pull up off my favorite female minister? Go ahead. Just play it from right there. You got a church experience. You don't have Jesus. That's why he said, I come in the volume of the book. That's why everything that he spoke and people that he prayed for, they were instantly healed because there was no scriptures missing. Look at the women. Look at the women. Though. Jumping up and down. Okay, cut that off. Cut that off. Lord, I this is a Jezebel spirit. The spirit that goes outside of her divine order. God gave Men, a divine order. He gave women a divine order. The Jezebel spirit says, I can do what he does. That's a Jezebel spirit. And Jezebel spirit hates the prophets of God. She feels that she is better than you. Give me the next Jezebel officer, Alicia, please. Titty girl, titty girl. Oh, you don't know who she is. For tuning in today to the gospel. Do y'all see the cleavage on this hole? 
Today I have my husband with I me. I shouldn't call her that. But do you see and the tease on her? In reference to a word that all I, you I see is cleavage, to, and you um, see a little bit of areola. Of my life. What the hell is this about? It. <laughs> but it was something that kind of came with the territory as you grow. Okay, cut that. The brothers the getting excited. Is, They're looking for lotion and jelly. Stop. These types of spirits. These female spirits like this here has creeped into Israel. Wait. Hey, y'all might know, whoever knows what the video is, there's an Israelite sister yes, 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 teaching yes. on the street. Yes. She knows she's Israel. Who is that? You know who she is? Okay. Put it up on the screen. Who got it? Who got a video? I thought I'd never see the day where an Israelite sister who knows she's an Israelite would stoop to this. Hold on. You got to send it over to Alicia. Because I was shocked. I was, I, I was like, no, 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 no. The Jezebel spirit is a, a very aggressive spirit in, in, in being, becoming a man and dominating men. She's a man eater. Some of you are married to man eaters. If your wife, for example, smacks your wee wee and says, get your little dirty penis out of here. I don't want that thing. If your wife calls you a ban, a ban. Y'all don't know what ban is? Beach, B-E-A-C-H, I'm being nice. Beach, A-S-N-I-G-G. Y'all know the rest. Chances are you have a man eater. But let me tell you something about women. Every woman has the potential to becoming a Jezebel. The only way she can become a Jezebel is if you are an Ahab. Yes, dear. I understand, dear. You jump when she says jump. Let me show you that. Hey, give me the precept about uh, uh, da, 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 da. No, where it says Jezebel stirred her husband. Find me that. Find me that. Hey, you got it, Elisha? Okay, play the tape. Play the tape. You ready? Come on, jump through it. I want to get to the point. So the said that we All right, the man's teaching. Jump, Elisha. Come on, jump. Come on, Elisha. Come on. Y'all make sure. It's only, and it need to be a Come on, man, jump through. The woman's holding post number one. They're destroyed by this wicked society. So my people are destroyed for a lack of mouth. All of this ass that man. Is this the video? Go back, go to the first one then. So you need to keep the last desk. Yeah. Come on, uh, Amaziah, you brother. I need y'all to stay with me. Don't send the wrong video. Mess up the whole spirit of the move. Come on, y'all. Hey, find me the one about Jezebel stirred up the spirit. Who got it? Uh, First Kings 21. First Kings 21. Watch this, brother. I want you men to listen good to this. Huh? Go ahead. First Kings 21. I'll start at verse 4. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would, not, and would eat no bread. But Jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite and said unto him, what Get, verse you at? That's verse 6. I want 25. Verse 25. Oh, that's what 25. I want. But there was none like unto Ahab. There was none like unto Ahab, a black man. Go ahead. Which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. Why and how? Whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. You see that? He jumped when she said, jump. And she portrayed herself as a holy. So let me tell you, brother, something about women with the Bible. We want, our, we want these sisters to learn scriptures. Some of you brothers know what I'm about to say because we've experienced it before. You brothers say to us, my wife loves the Lord. She studies the scriptures, and that's a good thing. 
But where does the negative come in? The negative comes in, she only studies the scriptures to battle you, to shut you to F up. That's a Jezebel spirit. If you brothers are courting a sister, or she reads the Bible, which is good, but when you talk to her, she's pulling scriptures to let you know, I know more than you, nigga. Shut up. Don't marry her. She's not ready as a wife yet. She's a Negro. She's a Negro P and leave her alone. Did y'all find a video hey, yet? Go. Okay. Now I know the women mad right now. I'm going to just tell y'all the truth. You ain't ready yet, you Juanita Bynum sisters. Come on. Here you go, right here. Giving your pastors your money. You say you love the Lord. Now the man's holding posts for her. Commandments. What the you hell is going on here? No statues. You don't keep anything. But you go around breaking the Lord's laws that he has put in place. She wants to wait. Stop. 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 She's talking about breaking the laws of God. Did what verse commanded the woman to go into the highways and byways None. to make her face hard against their face? None. Where is this scripture at in the Bible? These are these Juanita Bynum sisters. Yeah, we're going to read Timothy 2 too. Who's going to say something? You know, gonna, someone has something? All right, go back. Where was we at, uh, uh, Amazon? Yeah, go ahead. Sister, I told her on, the, um, on Instagram that that's off. And she said, what law is that? And Sister Paul Timothy. She said, that's not, that's not a law. That's, t- that's Paul's suggestion in a letter. That's what she oh, said. a suggestion. Wow. You see that? And he believed it. And he, hey, hey, give me that 1 Corinthians 14. If anyone calls himself spiritual or a prophet, uh-huh. let him acknowledge. All you sisters write this down. For you sisters that say, that's a suggestion or advice that Paul gave. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. You hear what Paul said? Let him acknowledge that the things that I write are the commandments of the Lord. Commandments! For example, when, the, when Paul wrote, have one wife. Guess what that was? A commandment of the Lord. Not a suggestion. A commandment. When Paul said, when Paul wrote, I suffer not a woman to teach. Guess what? That wasn't a suggestion or advice. It was a commandment. He further says, as also saith the Lord. Right. He also said, as also saith the Lord. Exactly. So now, Amazon, where are we at? Uh, let's go back to Revelation 2 and verse 19 now. So this is amazing. Now you may ask yourself, what has this got to do with the church of Thyatira? Everything. It has everything to do with the church of Thyatira. It has everything to do today with us. Watch this. I'll read verse 20 again. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Stop. What was happening in the church of Thyatira? Let me tell you something real quick. I'm going to show you something in the book of Acts 19. Go to Acts 19. Put the map back up. Put the map back up. Uh, Officer, let's the seven churches. Let me show you the relationship that Ephesus, which was the capital of Asia Minor. Put up the map again. I'm going to show you something. Y'all see Ephesus, right? On, it's on the Aegean Sea on the left. Do your little marker thing, Officer Elisha, so they can see it. That's Eph- Ephesus right there. Now go to Thyatira. Thyatira is further up, right under Pergamon, right there. So it's not that far away. Now you may say, well, what does Thyatira have to do with Ephesus? It has everything to do with Ephesus. Watch in Acts 19. Acts 19, let's start at verse 24. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 24. And a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no... Hey, Officer Elisha, go to Google and type in uh, Diana, the goddess Diana. Let's see what she looked like. The Greek goddess Diana under images. Who is this Greek goddess Diana? It comes from the Canaanite goddess Ashtoreth. Get that. You got me, Alicia? 
Put it on Google. I want to look at it. Any day now. Any day. Any day. Uh, go down. All right. I, just, I don't want the paintings. I want the actual stone relic. Wait, wait. Uh, no, 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 no. I want, nope. I don't want those. These are all transformations. Yeah, type in ancient Diana statue. Ancient. Because these are modern. Type in, put ancient. Take out Greek. Let's see what happens. Go ahead. Go down. Let me see something. Oh, right there on the left. Go to, oh, left, right there. Oh, right, right. I mean, yeah, right there. That's it. That's it. Let's blow that up big. This is what it looked like. Mm-hmm. Blow it up big. Okay. This is the Greek goddess Diana, which was also the Canaanite goddess Ashtoreth, where Easter comes from. The goddess, the moon goddess, also the goddess of fertility. All of those breasts she had. Why? Because she represented sexuality, sex, sex, and most sex. People committed orgies under her reign, under her dominance. Okay? This was about woman, female power, female dominance. Now, you may say, well, how does that relate to us? Oh, it relates to us very much today. When you listen, for example, the comedic community, who do they say is goddess on earth? The black woman. All that goes back to this. All of that black woman worship goes back to this. The black woman, the woman, the goddess of the universe, all that goes back to this. Go back to Acts 19 now. Verse 24. Watch this. Acts chapter 19, verse 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. Meaning he brought a lot of money by the selling of those idols of Diana. He made a whole lot of money. Read. Who he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. They were wealthy. They didn't have money. They were wealthy. Go ahead. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus. But, at Ephesus. Go ahead. But almost throughout all Asia. Throughout all Asia. Those are the seven churches of Asia Minor. Go ahead. This Paul have persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So when Paul went out throughout Asia Minor, he was preaching against Diana, preaching against woman dominance. He was teaching them Christ, the black Messiah. That's what he was doing. And everybody was mad as hell at him because he was interfering with their money. Read. Verse 27. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught. To be set at nothing. But also that the temple of the great Goddess Diana should be despised. He's causing the great goddess Diana to be hated and despised. Go ahead. And her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. People are destroying the idols. People are destroying the idols. Right, read. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath. They was pissed the hell off. Go ahead. And cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Go ahead. And the whole city was filled with confusion. You see that? Read. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. The amphitheaters. Go ahead. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. The disciples of Paul, you can't go in there. They're going to kill you. You can't go in. They already caught two, bro- two of our brothers. You can't go in. Read. And certain of the chief of, the a- of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Mm-hmm. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. For the assembly was confused. And the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. You know black people love confusion. You just throw a chair. Watch how many black people. Ooh, ooh. Look at World Star. See somebody get cursed out or beat up. You don't know what the hell's going on. Black people gather around with their cell phones. Ooh, ooh, World Star. That's how we are. Read. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. 
But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out. Two hours, what did they cry out? Read. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Can you imagine for two straight hours, these black people scream, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great for two hours. Nobody could speak because they kept screaming that for two hours. This spirit of Diana, the woman goddess, the goddess of fertility was throughout all Asia Minor. Don't forget that thought. So when we go back now, watch this. Go to 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy 1. Watch this. First Timothy chapter one, verse one and two. First Timothy chapter one, verse, verse two and three. I mean, two and three. Watch this. Verse two. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Watch this. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. Paul said, I want you to wait at Ephesus. What was the dominant religion? Diana, the goddess Diana. Read. When I went into Macedonia. That thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Don't teach no other doctrines. The most famous doctrine was Diana of the Ephesians. Now watch this. Chapter 2, verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Why did he have to say that? Because some of the women that were, were repenting used to worship Diana. They brought that woman dominant spirit into the church. Paul had to teach them, shut the hell up. Don't bring that spirit up in here. But women rule. The black woman is the goddess of the universe. Paul said, I suffer not a woman to teach. Because they wanted to bring those same characteristics into Israel. Wow. Feminism, right, thank you. Feminism. Read it again. Verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. With all subjection. Why? Because they were not subjected to the man. Why? Because they used to worship Diana and the women dominated everything. The, women, the men were subservient to the women. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah. The men were subject unto the women. So now Paul had to undo all that garbage. Go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. Because the women had authority over the man under Diana. Go ahead. But... To be in silence. Be quiet. Go ahead. For Adam was first formed. Beca for means because. Because Adam was first formed when you read Genesis. Go ahead. Then Eve. Then Eve. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. And Adam was not deceived by Satan. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. It was the woman that was deceived by Satan. So Paul had Timothy to stay in Ephesus to undo all that madness. That was going on out there. Let's go back to Revelation. Yeah, go ahead, I thought. That's why the Bible calls idols devils. Mm -hmm. Because it gives out a, dece a deceiving spirit of role reversal. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, today. Diana of the Ephesians is not called Diana of the Ephesians today. She's called the Wonder Woman today. Mm -hmm. And they put that image all throughout commercials, um, um, at different ads. They'll put women dominating the men all over television, all in action figures, cartoons. You men don't see that all these movies, a woman be whooping the hell out of men left and right. They're changing all the male superheroes into female superheroes. Iron Man's going to be a girl now. Wolverine's going to be a girl now. Hey, you know. Thor's going to be a girl now. Right. They made the, uh, the black woman the queen of Asgard now. Right. The hell is this? <laughs> so this, this, these are prime examples of them pushing that feminist spirit because America is yes. Amer uh, America is Babylon. America. Remember, I said earlier, I said a long time ago, America is a compilation of every captivity we were under mm -hmm. until this day. Everyone, Babylon, Greece, Persia, Rome, is all the same. But it all goes back to that feminism, worshiping the females. Yep. Hey, back to First Timothy. I forgot something. That last verse. How can I forget that last verse? Read verse above it. Uh, yes, sir. For Adam, First but, Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 14. 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. She shall be saved in childbearing. Listen good. That goes back. Give me Genesis 3.16. It does not mean, sisters, just pop out a baby and you're going to be saved. Half of you are single mothers. 
You ain't going to be saved just on that fact that you can pop out a baby. It goes deeper than that. Genesis 3.16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. Why? It brings to remembrance. You're trying to usurp authority over Adam. That's what those childbearing pains and those menstrual cramps is all about. Read. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Meaning you can be subject to your husband in all things. Like it says in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. I know the Negro peeing American black woman, she mad about that. Why I got to subject myself to the nigger? Because God says subject yourself to the nigger. And if you don't do it, you ain't going to be saved. I'm saying nigger because that's what they're calling us right now. Some of, you, some of you right now, you know your wife call you nigger at home. Don't look strange. We had testimony of that in here by two sisters. Read. And he shall rule over thee. And he shall, what's that word? Rule over thee. See that? The American Negro opinion, well, she don't like that. Only the repentant Israelite woman will accept that. This is the fight Timothy had in Ephesus. Go back. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Now withstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Now you understand what the childbearing means. It goes back to her not being subject to a man, getting child pains when she bared forth children. Go ahead. If they continue in faith. If, you say that word, if these women continue in faith. And charity. And loving of their neighbor as they love themselves. And holiness. And holiness, meaning the commandments. With sobriety. With sobriety, wisdom. Was that it? Yes, sir. So that's how they're going to be saved. So that's the fight Timothy had with the women. Let's go back to Revelation 2. And we were at verse, we're almost done. Verse 21. Verse 21. Revelation chapter 2, verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Y'all see that? Christ said, I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Wow. That's some heavy stuff. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Give me 1 Samuel 15, 23. Y'all know this one. She repented not. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, mm -hmm. and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Now watch this. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 44. Don't think this is the only time where women were rebellious against the laws of God. This is the church of Thyatira. Those spirits are there. Watch this. Jeremiah 44, 15. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name wait, of wait, the Lord. Wait, wait, give me the part where it says the queen of heaven. Because I'm not reading it with you. Oh, it's coming up? It's Go coming ahead. Down, yeah. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. You hear what the women said? We ain't, as far as the word of God is concerned, we ain't doing nothing you said, Jeremiah. We're going to do with all the words that came out of our own mouth. Because these women was always talking. We're going to find out why. Go ahead. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. The queen of heaven in ancient Egypt was Isis, the mother goddess. Mm -hmm. That's the same goddess in Acts 19, mm -hmm. Diana of the Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. It's the same feminist goddess. Mm -hmm. Where women rule, women dominate. And God is a woman. God is a woman, if you didn't know, my brother, really. From there, give me a, is it Ezekiel 13, 15, where it says, Son of man, set thy face. Yeah. Ezekiel, is it 13, 15? I forgot. Mm, bear with me. I'm just shooting from the hip. Where is it? Ezekiel 13, 17. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 17. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people. God commanded you men. He commanded us men. Set our faces against the daughters of our people. 
Why? Go ahead. Which prophesy out of their own heart. Because some of the women were making up their own prophecies. Why? Because here in Babylon, as we were going, they was worshiping the female goddesses. Go ahead. And prophesied thou against them. God commanded us to prophesy against our own black and Latin woman. Some of you men are here scared to do that thing. You go home and your woman is dominating you. You are an Ahab. We say, brothers, I said, bro, your wife did A, B, and C. You know what some of you men do? Make excuses. Well, brother, the reason, no, no, Ahab. No, that ain't the reason. Ahab. Hey, am I like, you got to start calling these brothers Ahab when they do that. You see their wife do something evil as hell. And then you tell them husband and he make excuses for them. He is an Ahab. A weak feminine man. Oh, shut the hell up. I just love this Bible. Don't y'all? It's just so wonderful. Let's go on back now. Verse 22. Revelation 2. Yes. Verse 22. And whoever's getting cut, you should say to yourself, the Lord is trying to tell me something. Because this is me. Self-examination. If this ain't you, guess what? It's water for bucks, ducks back. Is that the expression? Water for, is that how you say it? I ain't asking you, lava. Water for ducks back. That's it. If it ain't you, it ain't you. But if it is you, and you know you have many issues with your wife, you know that this is you. Don't be in denial. Just accept it. What verse we at? Verse 22. Uh -huh. Revelation chapter 2, verse 22. We almost done. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. You see that? Wait, what verse was that? 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Christ, I'm going to give them hell. Go ahead. Except they repent of their deeds. So remember, it's more than just one. You had a woman and she had followers in the church. I hope you congregations here in IUSC are listening. You got some men and women following women. Mm. I could speak on that some more, but my prayer is that you repent. Go ahead. Verse 23. Verse 23. Go ahead. And I will kill her children with death. You know who her children are? Her followers. I'm going to tell you men something. If you follow a woman, God cannot use you in this great work. I'm going to give you an example in the scriptures. Give me uh, 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 2 Kings eleven fifteen. 15. You, some of you men listening, maybe not up in here, but some of you men online listening, you know you follow a woman. Your wife can do no wrong. She is the mother goddess. Okay. Second Kings chapter 11, verse 15. But Jehoiada, but Jehoiada, the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds. Watch what he commanded the captains of 100. The officers of the host. The and, officers of the host. And said unto them, have her forth without the rangers. Bring, is this Athaliah? Because I'm not reading. Is, is this Athaliah, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Bring Athaliah outside the gates. Go ahead. And him that followeth her. And him yeah. that followeth her. Him. 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 Let me go online. Him. Not the brother on the camera. I'm pointing to the camera. Him that follows her. Go ahead. Kill with the sword. Kill him with the sword. That's what God ain't using no man that follows a woman. He's going to kill you. That is not your order to follow a woman. Hmm. Let's go on back now. That's some great stuff right there. Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. Yeah. Verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine... And which have not known the depths of Satan. Wait, stop. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, because you had some in the church that didn't follow a woman. Some of the men did. It says, and which have not known the depths of Satan. That lets you know there are levels to following Satan. There are levels. One level, brothers, is following the woman. That's one level of following Satan. When I ask a brother, I say, who is your counselor? You remember in New York? Damn. He said, sister such and such is my counselor. I said, sister such and such? 
I said, you better get the hell up on out of here. The hell is this? She's a, yeah. Hey, give me that scripture where it said the woman was his counselor. His mama was his counselor. Give me that scripture. Give me that. Give me that. I, we got to read it. Because some of you brothers in here listening right now, it's either your mama or your wife is your counselor. You're not a man. Or your big sister is your counselor. You are not a man. Where are we going? Second Chronicles 22. And what? And verse 3. Second Chronicles 22 and verse 3. Chapter 22, verse 3. Here we go. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. You see that? His mother was his counselor to do wickedly. You know that? We see that in IUIC. We have seen mothers counseling their children, their sons, in wickedness. Where'd you get that from, brother? My mama? And you sisters that marry his mama, boy, shame on you. You marrying him like marrying his mama. You get in an argument with him, mama calling you on the phone and paying you a visit. Who want to live like that? What the hell is going on here? Go back. Where we at? Uh, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. But I say unto you and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. The depths of Satan. Give me that Genesis 3.17. Y'all forget what God said to Adam. You f how quickly we forget. Genesis 3. Watch what God said to Adam. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because, Adam, you listened to your wife. You didn't listen to me. You follow what she said to do. Some of you brothers, now you got to sit back and just think. Take a deep breath. Ooh, is that me? When my wife speaks, do I jump? Do I ask, how high, dear? Is that me? When she tells me to bark like a dog, I bark. Is that me? Does she smack my wee-wee and tell me I don't want none tonight? Get that little dirty wee-wee out of here. Is that me? Does she eat dinner on top of my head and dare me to move? Is that me? Does she rub my underwear in my face? And say, wash your jaw, nigga. Is that me? Does she pet me on the head? Does she put me in a headlock? Does she punch me in the face when she want to have sex with me? I'm telling y'all true stories. Y'all might think I'm lying. They laugh hey, am I lying? No, so oh, I'm telling some stories. Some I'm brothers are quiet because they're thinking about that thing. I'm giving snippets of stories. <laughs> Snip. Is that me? Yeah. She cut my hairline back here. She moved my hairline. Yeah, Bishop. Yes. Yeah, my brother said you can see right through their house. Yeah. They said when Bishop... Uh, uh, deal with the scripture and look right into my house. That's what brother said. He said, did my wife told you? Mm. Or I mean, did my brother told you? My brother-in-law told you? That's what I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now you are, in a, you are in trial right now, brother. You got to make a decision. Do you serve the one in living God or do you serve your wife? Mm. Let me help you out. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 7.26. I love that one. I love that. Ecclesiastes. 726. Yes, Not Ecclesiasticus. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman. This is talking about Jezebel. Whose heart is snares and nets. This is a woman that runs the house. Brother, go and watch the brother that bangs the table. I run my house. No, you run around the house, brother. We didn't ask you if you run around. We asked you, do you run your house? He puts on those red high heel shoes and, ah, ah, the hell is this? Is that how they run? It's like that. Read that again. And I find more bitter than death. Every brother that we saw bang the table and say they run their house, they literally were the ones running around the house. Some of them brothers left up out of here. In 2018, the end, 
and they're doing videos. Read it again. And I find more bitter than death the woman. Jezebel. Go ahead. Whose heart is snares and nets. This is the type of woman God hates. He said whose heart is snares and traps. Go ahead. And her hands as bands. She's always trying to trap you up from doing the work of God. She always got an excuse why she's the ruling factor in the house. She must have the last word and you shut up and listen to her. Go ahead. Whoso pleaseth God. If you men want to please God. Shall escape from her. You shall escape from her. I let me read that part again. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. If you want to please God, escape from her. Now let me tell you something. Well, listen to what I'm about to say. You got two types of Israelites in IUIC. You got men that will do Ezekiel 13, 17, where God says, set your face against the daughters of thy people. Then you got brothers that go, no, the woman can do no wrong. I've seen you brothers teaching on YouTube. Some of you, I watch some of your class. I'm talking about you captains who will teach a class and the woman is a goddess. The woman, you know the wife is doing some evil stuff, but you'll sit, your whole class is catered to the woman. Brother, humble yourself to your woman. And I'm sitting there looking, and I say to you captains, I'm going to see how long this BS goes on. And you got sisters that go, did you see captain such and such class? It was just so great. And a brother will say, no, 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 no. Bishop did a class that said, I don't, she says, I don't care what Bishop said. Captain so-and-so said the man must cater to the woman. Really? And ca I'm giving you captains a chance. Let me do my right hand. I'm giving you captains a chance to repent. Because we're going to come down on you with two feet on your neck. You know who you is. And we see you. We see you. The woman, you got to just cater, brother. No, no, cater to her. She's, you know, she's, you know, she's just, whoo. Oh, that woman. What do you mean that's Judah? The hell is this? Oh, you're giving me a clue? He said it ain't Judah. See, that? they just said, see, Benjamin said it ain't Judah. It better not be Judah. Well, whoever you is, you know who you are. So, remember back, I'm going to say something. You know about it. You know about it. You know about it. Oh, Labano too. No, I'm talking about back in the old, when we first set up IUIC. I would teach a class. The woman would say something out of order. I mean, some crazy stuff. My wife knows what I'm talking about. This particular woman, I ain't going to mention her name. She would say some crazy stuff, and she had some followers in the church. I would do a class to cut it, and the husband would pull out and contradict every scripture we go over to cater to this woman. So what the hell is going on here? Sometimes that'd be right, so it'd be right there while we're sitting right there. We got the same thing going on now, Thyatira. You brothers of Thyatira, today is your day. You better fix that teaching. Mm. Brothers say, see, I know uh, now Atlanta man, why that black buck tooth nigga always coming out here? The Lord sent me here. Because there's some stuff going on here. I'm telling you women something right now. There's something going on down south. Yeah, something going on down south. From further south, further south, come on down. We don't like those classes getting on us. We talk about the church of Thyatira. If this ain't you, sister, just let it be like water off a duck's back. Yes, sir. I got to add something. You've been teaching now for about what, two hours right now? Yes. I'm about to close out. Damn. You all notice something? Bishop is teaching about the seven churches, right? You all notice not one scripture Bishop pull that said to leave those churches. You guys didn't notice that? You notice everything, every time Christ speak, Christ said, fix it. Christ said, repent. You guys didn't notice that? Mm -hmm. That's not one precept did Bishop pull that said, leave the church. Every single precept he pulled, he said to repent. That is why Christ said, all manner of sin are forgiven. So when something happens in, in the church, there is no scripture that justifies you. Walk away. Christ said, fix it. Fix it. The problem with the Negro, you don't like fixing nothing. Mm -hmm. You're too emotional. 
That's why, that's why you see brothers run out of here, sisters run out of here. They don't want to fix the problem. The seven churches prove. Christ said, hey, there's the, there's the spirit of Jezebel in here. I want you guys to fix it. Christ didn't say, hey, there's the spirit of Jezebel in this church. Leave. He then said that. He said, repent. If you don't repent to fix it, I'm going to come. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to destroy it. But he always gives you a chance to fix the problem. That's it. Guess what? Same thing with IUIC. IUIC is a church. There's going to be problem. There's going to be problem. But there is a way to fix it. The scripture is there to fix it. Right. Yeah, it's it just a lot, of, a lot of times, uh, brothers don't understand bishop class. If you used to wear pennies, today's your day you don't wear the pennies of the woman no more. <laughs> you put your own boxes on. All right? That's what this class is all about, man. Bishop said something early in the beginning of the class. He said that some women study to battle you in the scriptures. You remember that? When he said that? The same situation that we was talking about earlier said the exact same thing. But we asked him, he said, why is it that you won't put this thing in order? And his answer was, she battles me in the scriptures. Right. That was exactly what she said. Do y'all hear what he just he said? He said that. He said that about her. He said, she battles me in the scriptures. Right. That's the exactly. exact word she used. Yeah, 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 earlier I was talking to a brother. Am I going to put his name out there? Good brother. He's saying that, yeah, I mean, some scripture sisters should know, Bishop, but they, uh, uh, the scripture that they should, like the basic scripture, they forgot it. Why they will pick scripture when their husband do something to pull in on, on their husband. But the, the, the regular scripture that's supposed to be known, brother was shocked. Mm -hmm. Remember, the woman does have a role. I don't, in case, I know some sisters might be simple. Let me help clarify it. Sisters are supposed to know the scriptures. They're learning the scriptures to be a help meet unto their husband. An aid like unto himself. Sisters are supposed to know the scriptures to raise up the young girls and young boys to an age. Okay, remember it said let the old women teach the young women how to love their husbands. How to love their children. What to teach. They're supposed to know the scriptures. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Where Thyatira is stepping outside of that order now she's on this side of the room being a feminist. That's the problem with the church of Thyatira. Now she's at home telling the husband, shut the F up, you ban. B-A-N, you ban. That's what, that's what Thyatira was talking about. Now she's on the street with a microphone telling people, shut the hell up and sit down. She's out of order. She's out of order. Because we know how, most of these sisters here got a lot of skills. And we praise that. We honor that. We love that. But, and they're going to help us in the order they're meant to help us in. And God's going to bless them and honor them in their order. Go ahead, Lava. Yeah, yeah, man, what you say is true. The, the righteous sisters are going to understand that they don't got, these guys don't have nothing to do with them. It's them trying to build the other sister. Right. Man, but the sister that is evil, you understand, her thought going to bother her. Oh, we only talk about women, this and that. But the righteous women know these women, we need that. Right. We need you to step your game up. That's we right. need you to be the backbones. We need you for that. Sis gonna tell tell us I want to have I want I can have counsel. What, what what's wrong, sister? I I, I wanted to have uh, sex with my husband. He didn't want to have no sex with me. So what did you do? I punched the nigga in the face. I said you did what? I punched the nigga in the face. Really? Yeah, five times. You can't make this stuff up, right, New York? You can't make this up. Feel bad. This is your time, New York. This is your time. Headquarters. This is your time. I punched the nigga in the face five times. And she, believe me, brother, she had weight on her. She wasn't no little frail sister. This sister had some poundage on her. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when you think about what the Most High named, named a woman, he named her woman because she's of man. Her whole existence is supposed to be about helping, being an aid to her husband. Not only that, when it says that the elder woman should teach the younger women, what did it say to teach them? To love their husbands. You're supposed to teach the young women to also be aids to their future husbands. That's your name. That's what your name means. That's what it means. Be an aid and helper. Not this mild gender BS. That's not in the Bible. Real quick, get Numbers 27. I know they don't like me after that. That's all right. Numbers 27, verse 16. Because like I said before... All the idols that the nations have made are all, are all deceivers. Whatever God says to do, the idols set up, set up to go against that, to be contrary to it. Numbers 27, verse 16. Numbers chapter 27, verse 16. Let the Lord 
the God of the spirits of all flesh. Do what? Set a man over the congregation. It's clear. Read again. S let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Set a man over the congregation. But a devil or an idol will say no. What, set a woman over the congregation. Read the next verse. Verse 17. Which may go out before them and which may go in before them. For war. Go ahead. And which may lead them out. Which may do what? And which may lead them out. Which may lead them out. Go ahead. And which may bring them in. Go ahead. And what? That the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. So a shepherd is a man over the sheep. Not a woman over the sheep. A man over the sheep. Now, John also said in Revelation 14, these are they which are not defiled with women. And one other doctrine I'll bring up that comes from women is that all black only doctrine. That comes from the woman. And a lot of the men I've seen push that doctrine, their wives are either leading them or read for them. Oh, wow. That's or read for them. So be mindful of, you, of seeing men who proclaim to be leaders and have vast knowledge of their wives. And the Lord said in the background. That's, that is, that is um, Jezebel in the background. Jezebel is his, sword, is his armor bearer. You understand? So when you see a man re talk about, yeah, black only this. We got to wear black only. We got to have black hair. We got to have black faces. You see all of that? You see a woman read it for them? We got to have black gums. Black. <laughs> 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 you see that? You see that? That is a man who is an Ahab. Because a, a lot of those sisters, who have, of course, they hate Northern Kingdom. And they, they feel like they, they have a, a certain self-hatred. They go, okay, well, we don't marry them. Those are not our people. And the men, the weak, effeminized men, their wives counsel them to follow and suit in this doctrine. These effeminized men. So when you see a, a woman talk about, I'm, I'm, I'm Sojourner Truth. I'm Harriet Tubman. When you see them like that in these videos, that's them black-only Negroes out there. When you see a man's wife read it for him, same thing again. Same doctrine. Hey, Deacon, you know what? Somebody might jump, our sister might jump up and go, what about Deborah and Judges? She was the judge of Israel. Listen, when you read the history of Deborah, it tells you that Barak, who was the judge, was weak. And he would not do nothing without her. And God said, because you won't move, when I said move, you will not get the honor. The honor will go to a woman. And remember the self, I forgot her name. Uh, she she banged the, the yeah. thing through the man's uh, temple, the king's temple. Okay. Yeah, Bishop, you yes. have to open a man of valor. Uh, you have to open a class, the men of valor, like a woman of a valor. Women of valor? What the women hell is this? <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Deborah. Something else I was going to say. There's another sister they like to jump up in. She's a judge. She's a judge. Uh, yeah, she's a judge. Oh, speaking of Deborah. And it tells you that Deborah was subject. It said her eyes were unto the governors of Israel, which were the men. She was subject unto the men. And no, she didn't marry Barak because Deborah was married. I saw somebody wrote a, some type of book that said the love story between Barak and Deborah. What the hell is this? All right, let's go back before I forget the thought. Revelation chapter 2. Yes. Oh, another thing. I'm sorry. Remember last week we went over the Statue of Liberty. It might have been two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it said the Statue of Liberty is based upon the Roman goddess Roma was her name. The goddess of justice. That's in a harbor with the, the thing holding up. Mm -hmm. That's why you got this spirit of female dominance throughout America. Mm -hmm. It's all out here now. Women this, women that, women this, women that. The hell is this? All right. And it's only in European countries. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to these other countries outside of Europe yep. and they remember the two women that went to Afghanistan with that lesbian stuff. They got the hell beat out of them and imprisoned for the next 20 years. And so we don't play. This ain't France, and it sure as hell ain't America. We don't play that here. Right, when we went to Africa, it definitely was different. The woman, remember the woman, the women on the street said, do y'all teach that uh, the man is the head of the house? We said, yeah. She said, oh, because that's what we believe here in Africa. Mm -hmm. We said, see, we didn't, have, I don't know, there's a video on that. We said so we didn't have to coax her, or teach her nothing. She already knew that. She said, We are taught that we are raised like that. I said, Wow. I said, Not the Negro being black woman. Let me leave you lovely sisters alone. Let's go on. Where are we at? Revelation 2 and verse 25 now. Yes. 
24 again. Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. So there are, there are depths in Satan. There's levels to evil. One level is following a woman. That's a level of evil God can't stand. You got another level of you got your own personal lust. You got lust when you follow the white man. You got lust of money. There's all kinds of levels that the Lord can't stand. But that one right there, when you follow a woman, mm -mm. he said, that one, I can't deal with that one. Read on. And which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. Mm -hmm. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So that which you have already, hold fast till I come. So that, when you think about it today, people always ask, well, we only have the 66 books plus the Apocrypha, which is what, 80, right? 80 books. And they go, why don't we search for some more? No, no, no. That which you have already, hold fast till I come. The understanding that we have, the corrections that was given to the churches, let's follow that. Let's obey that. Let's apply that. Go ahead. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. And keepeth my works. Give me that in 2 Ezra 7.24. What is the Lord's works? 2 Ezra 7.24. I'm going to go through this kind of quick because I see I'm looking at the time. 2 Ezra 7.24. But his law have they despised. And denied his covenants. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. See that? His works are referring to the laws. That's the works we got to keep until the end. Let's go back. I'm going to just skip verses here. I mean, precepts. We're just going to run through it. Go ahead. What verse you at? Verse 27. 26 still. Go ahead. And he that overcome. Revelation 2, 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Unto the end. That's when Christ returns or you die. Go ahead. To him. Will I give power over the nations? There's no such thing as equality in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This verse goes with Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. You're going to give us power over the nations. Go ahead. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Hey, hey give me that in Zechariah 12 and 8. We're going to rule them with a rod of iron. Let me just run through this real quick. Zechariah 12 and 8. Zechariah. In order to rule the nations with a rod of iron, we need power. Go ahead. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. The feeble among us going to be like King David was, a mighty man. Read. And the house of David shall be as God. And the house of David shall be as God. That's the 144. Was that it? No, sir. As the angel of the Lord before them. As the angel of the Lord before them. Give me Daniel 718. Just going through it quickly. There's a lot more precepts we could go to, but for time. I'm going to just rush through it. Daniel chapter 7 verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. We ain't going to ask for a daggone thing. We're going to take the planet earth. That's the kingdom. We're going to take the earth. How? With the power that the Most High is going to give us. It says that the, the feeble among us going to be like David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord. What's that talking about? Spiritual power. From there, give me Zechariah 9, 12. You said Zechariah? Yes, Zechariah 9, verse 12. Uh, God. Okay. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. The stronghold is the Bible. We are the prisoners of hope. We're in prison. America is a prison house, in case you didn't know it. This is a prison, and we're always hoping. Read. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee, when I have bent Judah for me. Filled the bowl with Ephraim and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece. He's going to raise us up against Esau. That's what he's going to do in the com coming kingdom. Go ahead. And made thee as the sword of a mighty man. He's going to make us like the sword of a mighty man. Go ahead. Verse 14. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet. That's the proof is on the other side. It says the Lord shall be seen over us. So that ain't talking about now in case we got some crazy brothers in here. Where the Lord's it said it's going, the Lord going to be seen over us. That's his chariots. Okay? That's his angels. Was that it? Amazon? No, sir. And shall go with whirlwinds of the south. That's, That's it. the chariots, the whirlwinds of the south. All right? Let's go back now. Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. That means we're going to break the nations. 
We're going to break them to do what? To obey the Bible. We're going to break them to go back to their true identities. China going to go back to Moab. Ammon going to go back to, uh, I mean, Japan going to go back to Ammon. Okay? The Philistines going to go back to who they are. Because that word Philistine is the same word as Palestine. They, they took that name and put it on, on themselves. Everybody's going to go back to their biblical nationality. Okay, read that again. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken gonna, to shivers. Right. We're going to put the dietary law throughout the earth. Any nation caught eating bat, snake, frogs going to get broke. Meaning they're going to get judged terribly by the Israelites under Christ. Okay. Everybody understand that? We ain't going to play with the nations. So we're going to break them. And it means exactly what it's saying. Okay. Read. Even as I received of my father. Y'all see that part right there? Even as I received of my father. That's in Psalms 2. Get that. Psalms 2, 6 through 9. The book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. This is talking about Christ. Go ahead. Ask of me. Hear this part right here. Ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And I will give you the heathen for thine inheritance. Go ahead. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And you're going to rule the whole planet earth. This was given to Christ. Well, go ahead. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. See that Christ is going to break the nations with a rod of iron. Go ahead. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Christ going to dash the pieces like a potter's vessel. Was that it? Yes, sir. Go from there, Romans 8, 17. What does that got to do with us? Because everything Christ said in Revelation 2, it was promised to him in Psalms 2. Watch what Romans 8, 17 says. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children, then heirs. And if children of God, then heirs of God. Go ahead. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ. Everything that Christ has been given shall be given to the Israelites that make that first resurrection. Everybody understand that? Yes, Go back to Revelation 2. We're almost out of here. Revelation chapter 2, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. See, that's the proof. Even as I received of my father. That was Psalms 2. We're joint heirs with him. We're getting the same blessing that Christ got. Go ahead. And I will give him the morning star. Christ is that morning star. He's going to give us great, greater wisdom and understanding. We're going to be that morning star just like him. There's precepts on that, but we're running out of time. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All praises to the Most High. Let's get a Lord a hand. All praises. All praises. Go ahead, Malachi. All praise to Mosai for another great, great class. Oof, Bishop cover a lot in a little short time. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, we got, uh, of course, we want to thank Bishop for coming to always. We got Deacon Yaws up in the house today. All praise to Mosai. Uh, Deacon Aitan, we don't see often enough. Yeah, He's yeah. in the house. You only, that's only your second time here. What is that, your second time or your third time? That's only your second time here. We don't, we don't see you enough. And of course, Laba. All praise to Mosai. So they don't want to see me ever again. This side of the room, I don't want to see that black buck tooth <laughs> nigga ever again. Uh, Just die. Captain, ha Captain uh, Hanina is here today. Yeah. Captain Zef over there. Captain Yan. Joel. What's we got over there? I'm just happy to have your brothers, man. To come and uh, come visit us and uh, see if we can hold Passover with us. We didn't, th we don't, we didn't think we was going to hold Passover again this year, Bishop. But, uh, you know, he saw us the devil, the Bible speak of. Right. Damn the devil. Damn the devil. Well, remember, all of the IUIC schools, uh, some of them have restrictions of five. They're going to have to do it in houses. Some are 10, some are 50, some are 200. It's different in various states, so they, have, they let them follow 
what the legislation or the new executive order is for their state. So, so we have no choice but you know to to sub, how they say submit to the law of the land. All right, but we still we still got to keep it. We still got to keep it. Uh, Cap, what do we what else we have, Cap Shema? Uh, yeah, in, yeah, there was a few confusing in uh, uh, Captain Gutmi. Man, what's going on? Hey, 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 Miami, get it together. Don't act like their class was not about oh, you. Oh, Miami? Oh. Woman, Miami, uh, woman, that New loose. York, New York, get it together. Yeah, you get a few punch, brother, get a few punch in the face. Get it together. Uh, Cap, go ahead. Uh, any announcement? Where is the... Uh, Where's Officer Nichomaya? No, Officer Nichomaya, do you have anything? You captain in Miami, man. You know I love you, man. Just get to get it together. <laughs> one Judah, one Gad. Yeah, go ahead, Nichomaya. Okay, family, family. Okay, as far as the Passover in Atlanta slash Riverdale, if you paid for that in full, then you're good to go. Come on out here. If you have not, if you paid for the Passover in North Carolina, you should have received a Google document to make your decision as far as whether you want to move on with the event that's been rescheduled or whether you want to get a voucher for 2021 for the Passover or whether you want to actually get a refund. As long as you have not selected refund, you're good for your local Passover and you can come to Atlanta. Keep in mind, pay attention closely to the Telegram groups because leadership is gonna be putting information out there if anything changes, because everything can change with a stroke of a pen. Everybody understand that? All right. Class will begin after Passover. This is for the um, the inaugural 300 TCM group on Telegram. March 31st, Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Okay, this is with um, IUIC Dallas, the, the 300. All right, so make sure there's a... Yeah, this is for all IUIC, okay? So it says the class will begin after the Passover. The meeting is March 31st, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Look out for instructions and updates on the 2020 to 2021 inaugural 300 TCM group on Telegram. All right? Officer Lish, you ready? I can't say it again? All right, go ahead. His Modesty Boutique, His Lady, My Lord, okay? This is Sister Leia's uh, Modesty Boutique, His Modesty Boutique, His Lady, My Lord. Uh, if you want to reach out to Sister Leia, you can reach her on IamElishaba at gmail.com, correct, sis? I'm a, I am Israel at gmail.com, all right? Hey, there's a link, uh, Officer Alicia. Yeah, I don't see the, no link. The, there were some links that you were sent. You got it? Put it on the, on the screen so we can see it. So, Bishop, this is about the man dressing up nice and all that kind of stuff? His modesty boot? That's what I'm thinking. It's going, yeah. 
I want she is written out. I'm waiting for Alicia to put it on the screen so we can read it. Alicia, any day now, any day now, any day. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Is Abiel over there? Just the spirit, Bishop. Just the spirit. spirit. Yeah, I think it's the booth spirit. Damn the devil. You get a little another hand for that class, man. Hey, hey, at Mazai, can y'all watch my back when I walk past the sisters? I, I might get you, stabbed. Bishop. One of them might stab me. We got you, Bishop. Throw a knife in your back. Yeah. <laughs> hey, brothers, too. They over there looking at me mad as hell. Blow it up big so we can see it. Yeah, Alicia, can we blow it up big so we can... As long as, long as we don't have no women of valor program in, in Atlanta, we, we all right. We'll be all right. All praise. Can we uh, zoom in? I, I can't read that. All right. Y'all got to do something. I, I can't read that. Uh, uh, it says the fringe commandment, the fringe commandment dot com, home of the Hadassah Bath Challenge presents hismodestyboutique.com, an online boutique created specifically with the Israelite princess in mind, a brand that will feature modest, modern dresses, sari, skirts, and more. A brand that will always support our troops as a portion of all sales will, you, will continue to support IUIC Booster Club. Our online boutique opens April 4th, 2020 after Sabbath. Lord willing, for more information, email info at hismodestyboutique.com. That's what it says. He couldn't put it on the screen. All right. Uh, any, any other announcements? One day, I hope to expand my life with a rib by my side. From that day, we can keep the loss together. Put it up. Make a covenant with my eyes. I'll delight myself in the Lord and I'll fast, and He'll give my desires if I ask for the things my heart desires. I'll meet a sister and I treat her right. Make sure the lamp inside is burning bright. Gotta get it right this time. Oh, I. Since I know, I'm gonna prepare my life to be a virgin. 
it show his wife So that his heart can safely trust in me And that I'm no leave a him inside me Shake one fly to work with my hands Willing I'm a god of the lights of my mind Keep my candle shining bright at night So that I'm taking a breath All right, so that'll be on original royalty. You could pick that up on original royalty, correct? All right, uh, any other announcements? Anything else? All right, with that, tomorrow we have formal night. Y'all not gonna clap for that? And of course, after that, the Lord's Passover. All right, so all praise brothers and sisters. And with that, we say, Come, come here, man. Come on, man. All right, real quick, real quick. If you and for anyone who has not received the Google Doc, because I'm, we're getting some information that they're not receiving it to make their decision regarding the Passover, send an email to info at royaleventplanning.net, info at royaleventplanning.net. Do not put in any PayPal disputes, Israel. Thank you. All right, brothers and sisters, with that. Oh, yeah, we didn't right, break, break bread. Yo, uh, Cap, stand in the spirit. Man. Cap, stand in the spirit. All right, everybody got bread and wine? Oh, oh, I know what. Uh, there's one more thing I want to bring up. Deacon Malachi. Uh, deacons. When people, when our people go on Facebook to try to publicly embarrass us, mm -hmm. putting statements, they should be suspended. Immediately. I'll, I'll, all you captains, when men and these women go on Facebook, and they're with us, I mean, and they put posts to publicly embarrass us or humiliate us, they should be immediately suspended. Don't play with them. They're not, with, they're not part of the body. Right. Yeah, 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 that's what I, yeah, that's what I see the statement, Bishop. I say anybody that will put their complaint on, on Facebook, they're an agent. That's a sign of agent trying to destroy what we're trying to build. And then sisters too, they're good on that. I'm glad. I'm glad that spirit get on you to say that. That's you scripture. Check that that ashy black devil's opinion. That's scripture. This uh, I'm hearing Deacon Nathan, he's making a point. That's scripture because it says not one to eat with them, put them out of the body if they are railing. That's what that's talking about. All right, all praises. Everybody got bread and wine. All right. For I've received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do, ye, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Yeah, man. Deacon Yawasab said, yeah, whoever sister that make that bread, she was in the spirit. And clap your hands for yourself. You're saying Jesus was in the room. Yeah. Jesus was in the kitchen with that bread. All right, brethren. Faith, patient, salvation. Faith, patient, salvation. Faith, patient, salvation. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. It's what? It's what? It's what? It's what? It's what? It's what? All right. We up here? Alicia, are we off?